Our new partner who I'm really, really excited to announce we are working with, super, super stoked. Thank you, Angie Huberman, for this connect. It's incredible. Uh, AG1 Athletic Greens, I've been using them for a while. I have them every morning on an empty stomach. Basically, take one scoop and you put it into a uh, cup or glass or mug of eight ounces of cold water. And this is all your greens for the day. You're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Every day I take this, it's so good for my digestion, my energy. It's simple. It's easy. I don't like taking a lot of vitamins. This has been really, really helpful for me. I've had a lot of stomach issues my whole life, and ever since I've been gluten-free and taking the AG1s, it's really helped me in my stomach in the mornings. I love it, and I'm so psyched that they're part of the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm sure a lot of people don't like eating greens, let alone drinking your greens, but I can tell you straight up, it's got a mild tropical taste, and the taste is actually really refreshing, and I really look forward to it each morning. Don't, don't think it's just going to be just straight bland. Um, it tastes really, really good, um, and it's good for you, so remember that. This one blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's incredible, just one scoop, especially for musicians who are vegans or just musicians in general who want to get those daily greens. You can get the packets. It's incredible. I just gave some to my friend Derek from Sepultura. He traveled the whole entire world this summer, and he had, he had those every single day. He said it's, it saved him. I bring AG1s with me when I travel. It helps me stay healthy. You know the deal. If you're on tour and you are uh, a picky eater, but you need to have your greens, sometimes catering doesn't have greens. Sometimes you miss the catering. Sometimes you miss the backstage food. Sometimes it's too late after the show to go get food that you like. So if you just have a, a scoop of uh, AG1s in your hotel room before you go to bed or you're in the hotel room at night and you're starving and you want something healthy, boom, life changer. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with some convenient daily nutrition. That's all you need. One scoop in a cup every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. This is it. I'm super psyched. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash OLLC. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash OLLC to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. This is incredible. I love it. It's just basic greens. For me personally, this has changed my life tremendously. I'm not a junk food vegan. I don't eat a lot of fake meat, so I'm strictly, strictly greens. And this has been a wonderful, wonderful new addition to my life. So once again, visit athleticgreens.com slash OLLC. And get one free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Athleticgreens.com slash OLOC. Yo, yo, Liquid Death, thank you so much for hydrating all my guests, taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water, love your brand, love what you stand for, love what you give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. So if you go liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. And if you want to get water, liquid death water, go to amazon.com. But for merchandise and other things that's not water, go to liquiddeath.com slash Toby and get free shipping. Thank you so much, liquid death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives. Welcome to the One Life One Chance podcast. I'm your host Toby Morris. I got my brother from another mother back from the tour, uh, Mr. Derek Green. What's up? What's up? Thank you for being here, bro. Always thank you for you. having me. Thank you for having me, Mr. Morris. You, you make me feel. Uh, you make me feel. I don't know. Comfortable. I like when, I like having you, knowing you're right there. You know. I appreciate it. And that. a lot of people always comment and say, like, we love when Derek's on. And Oh, come on now. Like, our <laughs> voices together, it's like a wonderful blend of beautiful medleys. I believe so. <laughs> yes. That's a fine way of putting it. Um, and welcome to the podcast, Frankie Loyal. Hey, how you Frankie doing? Loyal. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, thank you for being here, man. Stoked. Yeah, we did, we just ran, I ran into you um, a couple weeks ago. You, you were doing an event. Um, Charity at the Viper Room yes. for animal tracks. Yes. yes. You're at the Viper Room. Yeah, he's doing, yeah he's doing, I was on the parking lot. I was chilling. Well, I went okay. inside and checked out a band, too. <laughs> yeah. And he was doing an event there. Okay. All right. It was really nice running into you, man. It was good. It was a it was a blast from the past, but it was nice. It was a nice. good night. It was yeah, a it was good really night good on the night, strip. Man. Yeah. What, what was that for? What was that, what was that for? That was for Animal Tracks. It's a Animal Rescue out in Acton. Uh, okay. So a lot of, right. you know, 
they have servals and baboons and every wild oh, animal. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's a beautiful place, and the women that run it are they're in it for love of the game. They're they're pretty hardcore. So the motorcycle community actually came together for that one. To yeah, and you do those a lot, or I do as many. I mean, I don't know if the words charities. I just try to be a service as much as I can yeah. when we're not filming because. I was a mess. I had a lot of help, so I got to pay it forward, and I want to pay it forward. So that's the honest truth why awesome. I get involved in this stuff, yeah. And I'm trying to think when I met you. I know it was back in the day, maybe Sacramento or up north. San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. Trocadero. I think it was 96. Damn. Maybe yeah. Redemption 87 played. Who knows, man? It was oh. a big show. Wow. Yeah. You gave me a lift back to uh, Upper Hate to my house because you guys were going to go sightseeing or <laughs> you are going to go handle some business. That's amazing. Didn't have a car and... We helped do loading with you guys, and you, you all let wow, me pile man. in the van. Yeah. And I remember you had a patch we talked about. You had a um, That's right. Guadalupe patch, and you gave it to me. You took it off your shirt. I don't know how you had it pinned on or something. You gave it to me, and I remember having that. I remember sewing it on my dickies or something like that later uh, on. I was trying to figure out when I ran into it what happened to that patch. Mm -hmm. And my wife remembered that, too. It's just it's crazy. Like, time goes by, and then yeah. all of a sudden, I'm watching one of my favorite shows you're on. I'm like, oh, my God. It's just cool how life is, you know? Yeah, he didn't go to prison. He, yeah. <laughs> he did good. What happened? Yeah. So you were born in San Francisco? <clears throat> no, actually, I don't know how that was written. I was actually born out in uh, Barstow, Apple Valley area. Okay, fucking internet. Right? Yeah, man. <laughs> Everything they say is it, true. Man. Yeah. It's but, trash. But that <laughs> technically, I mean, was my home for a few decades. Yeah. You know? And how was it growing up where you grew up? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I went to six different high schools. I got expelled from all of them. Uh, wow! You know, when I was sixteen, I was sent away for a while. You know, for I guess back in the eighties, when you were punk rock, you were considered like completely, you know, off the cuff. They didn't, you know, it wasn't like it is now. It wasn't so right. accepting. So you were considered a, a hoodlum, and totally. they, they treated right. you as such. So I think the early years were tough, mm. but you know, living in San Francisco in my twenties was a, a fun, wild time. Yeah, especially having yeah. tattoos back then too. Like now, yeah. it's just everybody's tatted up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that was like shocking back then. Right, extremely shocking. There was I mean, a protocol to the way you got your tattoos. Yes. Right, Huge it wasn't protocol. the face first either. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> I mean I remember not. Good Time Charlie schooling us when we were, you know, in Modesto. When we were like fourteen about how, you know, how you went about it, and you know if you were even allowed in the shop once you were of age, if he even wanted you in there. Yeah, he was a good teacher for that. And you just right. getting sleeves for us. Even you don't even have your hands right now, right? No, you I waited till yeah. way later in life to do that too. Like it took me forever, man. I think it's honestly because of the job. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know when yeah. I wear a suit, nobody knows, and and I can do other characters because I know what I look like every day. God, yeah. I have to see myself <laughs> in the shower, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I like that too. It's crazy. Like Johnny Depp's like hands are fully tatted, and right. like he has, I guess Nicholas Cage just whole back is tatted. Yeah. And, just like maneuvering through acting with that kind of stuff too, like it's a lot of makeup. It is, yeah. man. And, and they have a hard enough job anyway. Those makeup artists, and I like them, so we don't try to make it too hard for them. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um. So, you're so growing back. What happened? You're, you're taking it back. Yeah. Like so, growing back. up, you obviously you're a wild kid. Um. Do you have siblings? I have two sisters. Um, my little sister, I'm super close with. I, people often think she's my older sister. Cause she's bossy and uh, <laughs> talks to me like, you know, when I go on the road or, you know, if I have an event out of town, did you make sure you packed this? And, you know, this is, you know, I always keep her in the loop of what, you know, where I'm going or where I'm at, but she's just so, you know, I, I sometimes think she is my older sister. I'm yeah. Very, you know. And so, and so growing up, like what was like your first exposure to like punk rock and all that? Were you super young? Super young. I mean, I, you know, I was that kid when they said, Hey, go to bed. You got school in the morning. Uh, I would listen to Dr. Demento when it was the first time I heard the cramps. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Goo Goo Muck, and I yes. think it was like 78, 79, but I didn't know it was punk rock. Then I heard the waitresses and the Ramones. I heard Teenage Lobotomy. Now, that was going for a while, but it wasn't until, and it's always over a girl. <laughs> Her name was Shauna Brown. She was this beautiful, we're friends to, to this day. Oh, that's nice. cool. Um, but she was like, oh, I like this band called The Clash. You ever heard of them? And I'm like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that band. I didn't know who the heck they were. So I'd get on my BMX bike and ride a mile to the 7-Eleven, and I'd look through magazines to see who The Clash was. That's how I found Bowie and all these other guys, wow. you know, and, and nothing on The Clash. So I had to go to some, and I got to say, it was some stupid birthday party I did not want to go to because all the dudes were into football and sports, and I just, it just wasn't my thing. Right. Yeah. And um, 
the older sister of, of the you know the kid who's having a party said, "Hey, you guys, be quiet in there. I'm gonna watch Saturday Night Live. The Clash is gonna be on." Whoa. And I just went, "Uh, can can I watch the Clash with you?" And she's like, "Yeah, just don't talk." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, cool." <laughs> and uh, there, I remember Ron Howard was the guest host, and oh, wow. uh, nice. I think it was October twelfth, nineteen eighty two. I think was the date. And uh, damn. It changed my life. I, I didn't know what was happening in that moment. I just knew I wanted to experience that. Yeah. And that was a game changer to this day. I mean, I remember everything about that night. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. That's amazing. So, like, did you start it seeking out others who went the same stuff as you? Or, oh, that guy's wearing the Dead Kennedy shirt. I don't know. Right. I, I, <laughs> I did, you know, and it was funny because, you know, I think, you know, we sound old. We say this. You know, kids can get their stuff online, but you'd have to travel to go get your stuff, and it totally. was a big deal. It was a pilgrimage, but you know, my dad was a cop, <laughs> so <laughs> that was Whoa. not. I mean, that right. was a that was a just a complete you know push and pull, and and just you know, I think on one hand he respected the fact that I did want to do my own thing, but I think it scared him because, you know, you had cops and cowboys and jocks and. Anybody that thought you and your friends were different, I mean, there was always something you dealt with. Yeah, you know? totally. So, yeah. so was that? You think that's why maybe you were you trying not to get in trouble, but did were you getting in trouble because your dad was that? Did you like the fact that he was a police officer, or because you were so punk, like fuck authority and all that shit? Yeah, or? I think what it was was, uh, you know, people were like, oh, you know, your old man's a cop, like you know, you ain't got it in you. Oh yeah. I'll show you. So something to prove. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. which wasn't good at times because there's times I'd be in the back of the car and they'd be like, wait, such and such is your old man? And I'd be like, yeah. And then they'd beat the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Even shit. harder. I mean, they showed you because you were an embarrassment to them. But I think if I really had to be honest in retrospect, I don't think I was trying to be in trouble. I don't think any of us were. I think yeah. we were just trying to find our way. Totally. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't have a lot of reference. And, and anybody that was off the cuff back then that was older than us, Maybe they were, maybe they weren't the best examples, but that's what you had. Yeah. And, you know, it it just is what it is. But I, I think I was a kid that wanted to read his comic books and listen to records. And I oh, collect so you were into you know, comics. Yeah, and I collect action figures and mm -hmm. toys, and I like crazy movies and, you know, like the old horror movies, Universal stuff. So I was, yeah. that was my trip. Right. But if people, you know, poked the bear too long, then sometimes it didn't work out for either one of us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so what were you doing when you were getting kicked out of school? Was that, were you working? Were you just kind of just... I was working at times. In fact, I had the weirdest jobs. My first job was at a flower shop, and it was the 80s, so <laughs> divorces were huge. And uh, I was the bouncer for all these pretty women that were florists at this shop. A bouncer for I was a bouncer, yeah, because all these guys would come in and, you know, you know, they're just like, hey, baby, and they're, you know, these, they were really cool women, yeah. Wow. So I was, I was like a, a bouncer <laughs> security guy there. the flower shop. I didn't yeah. hear that, but yeah. that's crazy. It was rad, and all I did was sweep the floor and take, like, 10 lunch breaks, but, <laughs> nice. but I mean, nice. I was, like, 16 or 17, and, you yeah. know, because, you know, they thought you looked weird or you were weird, you know, I, I ended up having to trade in, in the food industry, like, cooking, I, Oh, wow. But uh, they had you st stay as a dishwasher in the back. They didn't want the public to see mm -hmm. you. But mm -hmm. I always had a meal, and I did like the work. I mean, my one thing about my dad is he taught us to have a really good work ethic. And, yeah, and, that's um, important. So, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I just think I remember, I think about it when I'm, I was on a ride the other night, and it was this big open field, and it was kind of barren. And I remember one time being 17, looking out at this big barren field going, man, is this as good as it's ever going to get? Like, this is as good as it's going to get. And that's just how defeated you are by what's around you sometimes. Yeah. You believe it. Environment, yeah. And uh, I just knew somewhere, some way I needed an out. I didn't know where, how, but I just, I knew there was something out there. Yeah, it, and was your was your dad strict? Were your parents strict? You know, on one hand, my father was super strict. And he was definitely, you know, a guy not to mess around with. I mean, I've seen a guy, you know, some t one time I was at a Dodger Giants game, which you know the the, the you know chemistry involved in that. That's just a <laughs> bomb waiting to go off. Raiders game, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is a Candlestick Park, and some guy pushed me like uh, just a, a grown man, and my dad tried to diplomatically tell the guy, you don't push wow. kids. And well, the guy and his friends followed my dad, and well, the, by the time it was done, the two guys weren't walking. Wow. I mean, so he was. It scared you as a kid, you know. Right. Yeah. But he also loved music, and. 
you know, when I got into Bowie and all these other bands, like he was very supportive of that. Where did he grow up? Yeah, that's a good question. My dad was actually found chained to a pole. Uh, he was an orphan. And uh, this was somewhere in, near Sacramento. And he and my uncles were, in, they were all in an orphanage. And, you know, they were part of that whole deal. So oh, wow. the fact that he got out and did something with his life, you know, I, you know, was pretty honorable. And then that's when he was discharged, uh, he had a, not discharged, but he had a forced retirement uh, from a routine stop where he was almost shot. And uh, it kind of broke him, but it was a good thing. I think he got that later on in life. But he became oh, a right. teacher and wow. mentored a lot of kids. What type of teacher? Teaching, yeah. He did elementary. Mm -hmm. And as much as he was a hard ass, the kids loved my dad. I right. Mean, you know, he passed away a couple years ago from COVID, almost two years ago from COVID. Wow. Man, sorry. So, sorry, man. Yeah, thank you. You know, it. It's weird because I got a lot of kids that wrote, or they're grown ups now, or even some of them were younger. But they, oh, I hear all the stories about the things he did, and oh man, that was that was very um, healing because yeah. I didn't have that kind of relationship with them, you know. Yeah, were you close towards like like when he, before he passed? No, okay. No, in fact, the last time we spoke face to face wasn't good. Oh, okay. And and I didn't want to, you know. I mean, I'll just say it. I mean, people know the story, but I remember he was. I don't know who you are. You know, I know people who look, or they're my age, or they're your age, and they're almost like sons to me, but I don't even know who you are. And that killed me, you know? Yeah. And he goes, I don't know what your life's about, you know, this 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 life you live, you know? I don't get it. And it just killed me. And, and he goes, sometimes I don't even know if you're my son. Then I kind of went, wow. all right, cool. Well, guess what? I'm out. Like, there was no yelling, no screaming. Mm -hmm. Kind of walked away and... uh and then I went about my business for years, and then I, uh, I think he tried to reach out a couple times, but I think at that point I was just too, hey, you know. I'm sure he's proud of like, seeing you. I heard he was, yeah, I heard he was. You know, my mom, you know, uh, we talked, you know, after his passing, because we were filming when he died. Uh, so I didn't even, I mean, I wouldn't even got, had a chance to go see him in person. Wow, So, uh, yeah, we were filming, and it was towards the end of the season, but uh, I made my trip out to see my mom, and we... Uh, had some good talks and I heard he was proud. I wish I would have heard it from him. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and that's yeah. why, you know, I mean, you know, and not to be on a dark note about it, but like when I told you, like how you are with your son, yeah. I think that's so great because, Thank you, man. you know, I know my dad had a lot of good in him and I, and I feel closer to him now in his, his passing, which is strange because I understand things more mm -hmm. yeah. and it was actually very healing. So when I talk about it, it's not a sad, hurtful thing. It's almost like I see, where I was then or what my headspace was. So it was, a, yeah. I think the best gift he gave me was healing mm -hmm. and understanding in his passing, mm -hmm. yeah. which is weird to say, but it, yeah, it it's crazy what it happens too. It's beautiful yeah. too it, though. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it is yeah. weird at the same time, you know, it's death is something that comes to everyone. Yeah. And it's such a natural part of being on this planet. So right. I, I think, you know, depending on cultures and environment and how you're brought up, it, we deal with it in so many different ways. But I think, right. you know, when it, it can be so revealing, that's what, you know, I, I think is a challenge for a lot of people to get over the aspect of the sadness, but right. the beauty that's behind it, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I'll be honest, and there's people who know me who said it, they go, that young, angry kid in you isn't there anymore since your dad passed. Mm -hmm. You've changed. And. So I took a big look at that, you know, because yeah. I mean, I've got a part in it too. And, but then I kind of joke, you know, with my dad, because there's times I'm on the bike where I've had some major close calls where there's just no way I should have got out of this wow, one. And I was thinking right. like, you're trying to win points. Like you're good. We're good. You know, it's, it's uh, <laughs> good looking out, you know? So it, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's brought me a lot of peace, you know, like yeah. understanding the man. Cause we don't, you know, we see one dimension of our fathers. We don't really see the whole person, which right. is yeah. something I think we should do a little bit more. You know? 100%. Yeah. And your mom? Is your close she's with rad. Her? Yeah, she's oh, rad. And she's a tough lady. And, you know, it's funny because I feel like there's a part of her that kind of came out into her own again, too. You know, and she's yeah. feisty. And, she, you know. Where she, does she grow up? She grew up kind of up north in Northern California. It's a very small town called Wheatland. And you can only tell where Wheatland is when you pass it on the road because there's a big, well, I heard it's gotten bigger now, but it has a big water tower. That's okay. all you would see yeah. in the distance, and that's where you knew where it was. Somewhere outside of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, it, it uh, looked like Salem's Lot, kind of scary. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> was your mom and dad together when? 
Yeah, they were together. Uh, they were together fifty-seven years when he wow, passed. Man. Oh, man. So that was a thing. Like you know, that's they they too, were hardcore, man. man. They were they were about each other. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's. A lot. I'm twenty-six. I'm twenty-six right now. I'm hoping to make it to fifty with my wife. Twenty-six. Sure. Man, you look great. No, twenty-six. <laughs> twenty-six years. Twenty-six years married. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. You, you yeah. look great and vibrant. You Thank can, you. Yeah. <laughs> Because some marriages, they take a toll on people. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky, man. You're so lucky. Damn. And your wife's a nice lady. I remember, all, my experience with me, always super cool. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Um, so so, what are your goals when you're out of school? Like, what are your goal? What do you want to do at any, when you're younger? Like, Yeah, what year did you graduate to? You didn't get kicked out of school? I think I did. I, I tried to beat up the football coach. Oh. No, for I real. See that happen. Yeah. Football coach. If you see, saw Revenge of the Nerds, a John Goodman yes. type coach, yes. he was that guy. Wow. So... <laughs> yeah, he wanted me like to roll over for some of his his you know his prized guys. We all got into a little bit of trouble, and and they wanted a rat, and I wouldn't because I actually really didn't do anything. I was just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had already you know come out from being locked up for six months, so I was like, don't try to rough me up, dude. Like, right. So you there. got locked up for six months when you were in high school. When I was sixteen, yeah, yeah. What was that for? Did he talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I was incorrigible. I was a runaway, and uh, you know, I was definitely not willing to. Uh, I, I, you know, I liked learning. I loved education. I was definitely in, uh, inspired by some of my teachers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just didn't like sitting in the classroom with people I felt really uncomfortable with. I felt right. like a caged animal. I wanted out. Yeah. So, you know, when I went to, uh, I got put in an independent study class where you think it's just one-on-one with a teacher where a lot of people didn't take it serious i took it serious the guy that mentored me would give me a stack of books that you know was high as the ceiling he's like you have to get this done by the end of the week and i still am in contact with that man it was ralph vigil had a huge impact that's amazing man but i remember when they had the graduation procession i was dumping trash and i could hear it in in the distance and names being announced from the stadium and i was just like yeah what year was that? 88. 88, no, 87 or 88. One of the two. I okay. don't remember. Yeah, I graduated in 88. Yeah. 89? I'm 70. Year, what year are you born? 79? 69. I'm 70. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're more I said, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So what about music? You ever play music or anything growing up? I do. Bands? Yeah, so leading back to my dad when he was on the patrol in Barstow, he had a, I don't know if he had an accent on one of the routine, ch- or they had a chase, but my mom bought him a drum set for Christmas. <laughs> And it was one of those Ludwig, uh, looked like Ringo Stars, that silver black sparkle, yeah. like beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like it was a drum similar to one of the Ed Sullivan show. Okay. Well, I wanted to play it. So it started off with the snare. And then eventually, you know, I got, I think, a hi hat. And he just kind of elevated up on that. And I did play drums since I was a kid. I never thought of myself as trying to be like Neil Peart. Mm-hmm. But I definitely would listen to ACDC. I right? got into Blondie because Clem Burke was a phenomenal drummer. Mm-hmm. But it was funny because even before I knew the, the mathematics of punk rock and drumming. I was, I was like, I wonder what it sounds like faster. I didn't want to just play slosh beats. I always wanted the hi hat to be like, you know. So I kind of, I kind of just evolved into that. And of course, I played piano and I could play some other piano. Wow, self taught too with that. No, I did. They sent me to piano classes sometimes, and I, I mean, I liked classical music. I mean, I liked music. Yeah, you know. So I, like I said, I think for a young kid that had limited resources at times, I think I really was very resourceful. Yeah. You know? What was one of the first shows that you saw? Uh, like, which, like, punk rock show? Punk rock show. I saw, it was at the farm. It was Possessed, DRI, and <laughs> Discharge. Yes! And oh, it was their hard. crossover that's... album. Yeah! It did not go yeah. well for Discharge. I remember seeing flying garbage cans and bottles Damn. and everybody was spitting. And yeah. They couldn't calm the crowd down. And I'm going like, oh, I think I'm going to die, but... Whoa. This is cool. This is cool. And and uh, and and like I said, I remember hitchhiking with my buddies. You know, like a hundred something miles to go see Motorhead in Oakland when Oakland was Oakland. You know, yeah. like really. You know, <laughs> and there was no GPS, no iPhones, no nothing. No, like man. you know, not even a Thomas guide. I think it's over here. You yeah. know, so <laughs> it was like Detroit Rock City. We thought we missed the show. We missed attitude adjustment, and then all of a sudden. We see Lemmy's mic, and he comes out, and it was like, oh. wow, man. wow. Yeah, I found God that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody mentioned that Chromax GBH tour. Um, yes, I remember too, that. Like, how the crowd was crazy for GBH. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, Chromax, I mean, GBH came on, and it was like, ah, Chromax is slated. The Chromax opened for GBH? Yeah, yeah. Wow, 86, man. right? Yeah. 
And that they also had a huge show in Sacramento. I remember that mm. after Chromax played, everybody kept running around. Chromax, yeah, wow, his I mean, for, you know, forever. Yeah. I was locked up. I oh, remember hearing man. about it. Yeah, damn, remember hearing about it. So the stories are true. Then they must have killed. I mean, oh, they who wants it. to play after the Chromax, especially in the back then? Especially back, especially yeah. back then. Yeah. Yeah. Was... yeah, but when I came home, somebody actually got. I still have it. The original Age of Coral on vinyl, like the Whoa. original album. To the, yeah. Discharge. I wonder what it was. Was it like that? More I see, the yeah. less, the less I believe. It was like back on the time. It? Yeah, it was like <laughs> it was like the, the singer like, looked what? like David Lee Roth, and the drummer looked like you know Bo Derek, and it was just <laughs> the whole crowd. I just remember the few moments of silence of that's discharge, like you know, and yeah, if <laughs> yeah, it, 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 but there's a if you go on YouTube, you, there's excerpts from that show from the soundboard oh, and wow. you can hear guys just the audience going off and, and people walking wow. by and, yeah, it, and I was like oh, I was there for that they were relentless yeah. they loved you or they wanted to kill you and no then, in between <laughs> and then what about New York Hawk you got into that too around? you know it, it was I remember like I said the Chromax to me was wow and then, of course, if it was 86, 87, I got Ignacio. Cause for Alarm and Ooh. Victim in Pain. Still got those on vinyl. Incredible and, band. Yeah, and saw them a couple weeks ago. Still killing it, dude. Right? Stick yeah. with dude. And they, they played with time, which I was stoked. Because that's wow. honestly my, it, to this day, it's still my favorite agnostic front song. I never really liked the faster, like, but with time, it's still my favorite. Like, yeah. But Craig hit me up and said, hey, we're in town. And. I'm bad. I forget that people come through and play shows, and I'm always here about it yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But every money, everybody managed to get me that week, and I was like, "Yes, I'll be there." The Roxy <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> such yeah, my a wife great and show. It was awesome, dude. Unbelievable. That's super inspiring. That's like our peers, like still doing. Oh, stuff. It's like mid '60s. Yeah. Rod yeah. just went through a whole bunch of health mm -hmm. stuff, like killing it, yeah. dude. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that's the part that I, I sometimes when people talk about new artists, whatever. I'm sure. There's some great artists out there, <laughs> but in the world of auto tune and hype, it, it you, you do get a bit closed off to it, yeah. you know. And I'll run. It, it's like a, a safety blanket. I'll run back and and put on something that you know. Like, yeah, that auto tune really yeah. shook me up. I was like, this is for real. You know, people are really yeah. and it's massive. Yeah, and you know, oh. <laughs> there's massive artists that use it and they became. I I know. I, I, uh, I was just trying to get my head around it. It's hard. It's right. difficult. You know? And I just see guys lugging their guitars, you know, barely affording the strings to put them on them and, and trying to create good music. And I'm like, I hope that never goes on the wayside. I doubt it will, but, nah, yeah. but you just, you know, because we're so saturated with that. In L.A., you see it on billboards oh, everywhere, dude, you yeah. know. So did you play drums in a band at all, too? I did, um, in a few of them. And then at my last band, it was Round Nine Collective, where yeah. I played drums and actually sang. Wow. Yeah. So at the same time, which that's is wow, that's, yeah. that's hard. I can't hard. chew bubble gum and walk, but I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. What, what were some of the band names? Your earlier bands? Oh, geez. Just straight punk style. Or? They were. I mean, I'm trying to think. I, well, the first punk band I got into '85, I played drums, and they were all in their twenties. Was a band called Problem Fish. What's and it I, called? Problem Fish. Problem and Fish. I remember seeing some YouTube stuff on it and it's so dark and gritty in the club and I remember wow. it was a school night and I was supposed to be in bed but the folks let me get out and play the show and <laughs> and it's just and then there was another band uh, Baby Alive remember Baby Alive the doll that you could feed yeah and, and uh, the singer was Marion Holloway they did a documentary on her called Last Fast Ride it did really well at Sundance but okay. she was a singer for the In Saints who passed away and I was in several bands with her and she was super talented and untimely passing was not good obviously but very yeah. well loved and she was part of that whole east bay gilman thing and yeah and uh so then there was times where i didn't play her i was a hired gun here and there and mm -hmm. you know i'm just trying to think i did a couple shows for the untouchables when they did punk rock bowling that was fun oh that's cool um punk rock bowling is fun yeah but i can't remember yeah <laughs> i'm old see this is so i can't remember yeah yeah, Gilman Street's still there. It's like probably one of the last standing American punk rock clubs that's still standing. You know what I mean? Since CB's wow. is gone, like right. the Discord House in DC is still there, but Gilman Street's still there and kills it, man. It's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, the last time I was here, I saw Op Ivy's last show. Whoa! Wow. Yeah, and it was her last show because I remember there was speculation that it was her last show, but they would, 
Yeah. And Tim's brother still works there. Yeah? Which, yeah, Armstrong's uh, brother oh, works really? there. Yeah, he still works huh? there, yeah. See, I just, now I need to call uh, Jesse when I get home. <laughs> yeah. What year was Operation Ivy's last show? Man, wait, 80. 89, was it? Wow, man. Was it? I think. Damn. Damn. I'm just trying to go on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going so, back in time. <laughs> so what are you doing up to the point when you want to start doing acting? Or does acting happen on purpose? Is it? Yeah, how did that like, even come into play? I mean, when I was a kid, I... I well, actually, when I was in high school, uh, when people want to make an example of you, it seems like in certain education systems they want to humiliate you. Mm -hmm. So they tried to put me in sports, and I just I felt like Danny Zuko. Right? It wasn't working out. I didn't like it, although I was very good at baseball. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I just wasn't into it. Yeah, and and so they threw me in a drama class, and I think they thought that was going to put the hurting on me, and I was very resistant to it. But the teacher who was, you know, doing the class, her name was Mrs. Cunningham, and she was a tough lady. I was actually very scared of her. Wow. And uh, she just, you know, iron fist. Well, I did the class, and she goes, I want to talk to you, you know, after class. And she just said, you know, you realize that you did some really cool stuff here, and um, I think you have a knack for this. Do you ever think about coming back and I was like, uh, yeah, well, think about it, you know, being that guy. <laughs> and uh, not like I had anything else going on and hang out the park with my friends. But but uh, it was the first time an adult like that told me that I had something, you know. Mm. And uh, it uh, it stuck with me. And I, you know, I think I did want to do it. But, you know, I'm thinking one of the possibilities, you know, like, I mean, come on. Yeah. Tat they didn't like tattoos back then. They didn't like this or that. But I ended up. Uh, being approached on Hate Street in San Francisco by a casting agent that was doing a show for Don Johnson, and I Don thought, Johnson, wow. yeah, and I thought the guy was like hitting me up to do porn, and I was really <laughs> offended, and I kept telling the guy like, "Get out of here, I'm gonna knock you out," and he's like, "That's the spirit, that's what I like." I'm like, this thinking, "This guy's sick." This is an porn called Don yeah. Johnson, <laughs> right? Right? Totally. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this guy's doing some weird stuff. So I go to the tattoo shop and tell my friends, "Yeah, this guy just," and they're like, "No, he's a real. This is his card." Legit. And wow. So the guy actually went back to my friend. Eric Jones and and left his card and said, you know, I ran into this guy or something like, you know, if, if anyone's interested, give us a call. So they dared me to do the audition and I oh, did wow. and I booked it and wow, I got man. it. I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, and then I, you know, a couple years later did was it. Was it a speaking part? Yeah, it was a speaking oh, wow. part, but I mean, I was too busy. You, know, you never look at the camera, but I was like, am I on TV? <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> And you know, it was it was just a trip. And wow, then it, how old do you then? When that I was twenty six, I think. Okay. Okay. And then uh, did a Sega commercial and saw all the money, and it, it was it was a trip to see that coming from a commercial. Yeah, right. commercials so, pay good. Yeah. What I was did. the commercial? Sega, and I think they aired it at the Super Bowl. So the money was just Whoa, unbelievable, right? Dude. So a Sega commercial. Yeah, like wow. a smart twenty six year old. I spent it on sushi and girls. Were and, you friends uh, wait, 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 what, what yeah, was the part tripping. of the, in the, in the commercial? Like, were you just? Uh, it was like we were these fighting characters, um, and they had a band called Merv that played, and there was a pit, but the <laughs> the pit was actually these characters, and I actually did stunts in it, and wow, and uh, I mean, I know I was doing stunts at the time, but I think they got a good rate on me, and uh, <laughs> you know, and then it went dead, and then I did another movie, and my first like scene that I did with somebody that was super cool was Tilda Swinton. Wow. And she's a class act. Yeah, she's awesome. And was so cool, and you could tell I was green, and and just so, you know, it was something else. Wow. And, and eventually they told me I had to move to L.A., and I was kicking and screaming the whole way. Yeah. I didn't want to. And I did, and the first couple of years were very tough. I mean, I'm I sure, man. Working three jobs. Who was telling to you broke. to go to L.A.? Like My just, agent in San Francisco. I see. Okay. And I was newly sober, so that was really, like, tough. How long are you sober for now? 20 years. Yo, yeah. Congratulations. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Thank you. So newly sober, going to LA, you're going to try to just go for it. Yeah. And, you know, everybody, you know, do you have this? Do you have this? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, yeah. like I don't understand this, and I don't understand networking, and I'm not that mm -hmm. dude, and I'm not going to mixers, and I'm, I, you know. So I'm just, <laughs> I got to figure it out. I had some luck. And I met uh, Mexi Mike on, on, a, on a shoot once, really? years and years and wow. years ago. And, and uh yeah, it, it, it you know there was good times and there was times where it was super quiet. Right. Know? Yeah. I mean, what were you doing for work when you came to LA? Like, I worked yeah. in a kitchen. I I 
I almost went. I almost got sent away for a long time. Uh, Coming got, out here? Uh, no, this is when I was twenty. Okay. Got into a bad scrap, and uh, mm. I was dealing with some powers that be that were not on the level. But you know, yeah. when you're a hoodlum. Like, what good is your work? And uh, the judge, you know, I went to jail for a little bit, not long. But I was there for a bit, and uh, the judge in court kind of, I don't know what it is to this day, I think, the man, but he's like, look, there's two ways you can go on this. Either you're going to, uh, you know, continue on this path, or you're going to have to find a trade. I didn't know what that meant. Mm. And he goes, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm in a band. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and he's like, no, what, 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 do you, what do you do for a living? And I go, I play in a band. And he goes, but you have any other form of income? Yeah, I work in a restaurant. Yeah, I work in the back. He goes... You should think about a culinary school. Hmm. So I applied to this school in San Francisco, and I got in the culinary academy. A judge recommended that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow, and he man. goes, you'd stay out of trouble for two years, and, and you know, we, yeah, and his name was Judge Robert Qual. See, I remember. It's so Good cool, man. man. And First the teacher, and then the mm -hmm. judge. Is like, yeah. The judge of all people. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, that guy jailed somebody six months for clipping their fingernails in his courtroom. So this guy was hardcore. Yeah. I, oh, so, I think I would shit. do the same. Right? <laughs> disgusting. Right? <laughs> but, you know, he was that guy. And, yeah, so I went to the Culinary Academy and graduated. Wow. Because wow. that was like first time I graduated in anything. That's incredible. That's amazing, mm -hmm. man. But I worked in the kitchens the whole time. I, I don't think I was the best student because I was still in the kitchens. Yeah. So I came over here and worked in as many kitchens that, you know as I could because being an actor, you're making money to be broke. Yeah. And trust me, I've had some rough times where, <laughs> you know, I don't know where I'm going to eat, you know, even right. though I'm eating at the restaurant, but outside of work on my day off or, you know, yeah. yeah, you're trying to play catch up. Yeah. And it's interesting. We had some actors on here and it's like, you don't know if the next season's going to happen. Yeah. You don't know yeah. what's the next job. It's really like living from that to that. Yeah. Right? Artists have this yeah. life, man. For yeah. Sure. No so, doubt. So I try to be smarter about that now and save for a rainy day and. You know, it's a sacri you sacrifice a lot too for that. You know? Yeah, you feel like you're paying yourself back for the times that you missed out on things. Like I'll be honest, there were so many shows I did want to go to when I was here, but I was always working because I had to put bread on the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think I'd say within the past seven years, I started living my best life, wow, doing what man. I wanted to do, and and you know. If That's I want to incredible. take myself out to a dinner, I'm going to do it, damn it, because I mm -hmm. cook for everybody else. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just been, it has a lot of blessings, you know. Now I say it out loud, I'm like, yeah, man, it's been pretty good. What was, some, what was like one of the biggest things you did before Mayans? Like, what was. Oh, jeez. Was just about, I'm, wait, is, it, is it true that you were really in a movie with my boy Rappaport, Ethan Supley, a stand up guy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bob Saget. Yeah, but I didn't meet him. Mine was just a quick, uh, uh, I, I did a quick chase, I think. Okay. And I, yeah, I it's don't so, remember. Rap, I was yeah. like, oh, you with the rap report, Ethan Supley? Like, that's so wow. cool. Yeah, yeah. my friends, yeah. Yeah, I, I did that and. and it's uh, on your resume. Yeah, <laughs> I was there. I saw a light. I knew we were on, but the rest was a blank. <laughs> but even this little things like that, I mean. So I'm I grateful for him, yeah. Yeah, man. Put like, bread on the table. Yeah. yeah, you know, I like to work. I'll work a hundred hours a day, mm -hmm. but all that other stuff. Sometimes I'll be honest. I, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not really my thing. Not I'm for not sure. comfortable with all that. Yeah, you, you know? seem low key. Like you're just like, I don't. How do you say this? I want people to like. If you watch a six million dollar man now, mm -hmm. right, or a show like that, mm -hmm. you just remember how cool. Steve Austin was, yeah. and, and he was a man Bad barely ass. alive. And look what he did. He even fought Bigfoot until they became that friends, was, oh right? God, that was, I was just thinking that right. in my head, like Bigfoot, yeah. everything about and, that. And you remember that stuff. And that's, I just want, if I did anything good with uh, art yeah. and film or music, and I want people to remember that. I don't want them to, I don't care what I had for lunch. They don't need to know about that. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. as my friend Susie Gunner says, nobody cares about you t raking the leaves. They, they want to see the work. It's yeah, the, the work. work. Yeah. And that's something that I, I'm a big stickler on. It's the work. Everything else, it yeah. is what it is. So leading up to the Mayans, were you, were you super busy doing other things? You were just doing... Were you... I was going back and forth between L.A. and Santa Cruz, my then-girlfriend, who was still a really awesome gal. Okay. And I really thought at one point... Uh, this isn't happening. You're mm -hmm. like, I don't, you know, I, w I don't want to say I was going to quit because I never want to throw in the towel, but I really didn't think anything was going to happen. I did audition for Sons uh, for a role. 
Oh, wow. The guy died, and had I taken that role at the time, I never would have had a chance to be on Mayans. Thank God I didn't get it. Right. Um, at the time, I, I could really bum me out. But, but uh, yeah, it was just a struggle. But I knew there was going to be something after Sons with Mayans. I just knew it. Mm-hmm. And I remember talking to agents, and, and they lied to my face. Oh, yeah, we heard about it. I'm, like, talking seven years before the show was even a show. Yeah. But it was wow. a gut instinct, and I was trying to find a good agent to... So, you know, me on that. And yeah, it was the most brutal, frustrating, you know, yeah. hitting your head against a wall like numerous times. And agents looking at you lying. Oh, yeah, we have a client we're sending to be a conflict of interest. It's like, but there's no show. Now I know that at the time. I didn't wow. know that. But it just shows you how this town works. Yes. Yeah, so you're on the verge of like quitting before the mines. I mean, I just think I'd hit a wall where I was like, yeah. I'm 47. I don't think anything is going to come of this. And I don't want to to feel defeated because that's like samurai shame i couldn't live with this yeah yeah and my mom god bless her would always be like hey you know paul sorvino look what a great actor that man is and if he had quit nobody would ever see you wouldn't know his great work and i read this thing in reader's digest and he was 47 (laughs) when he got his big break and yeah i met the man wow and he and i sat down and had uh huge heart to heart at swingers in santa monica no way man. <laughs> and this is i had just had a band meeting and uh i had 70 bucks to my name and i told the waitress that man over there i didn't even say who it was i said i'm buying his dinner oh. don't tell him who it's from just buy it because i had so much respect for the man yeah his work. of course while he was sitting with his son michael and uh, his girlfriend and at the time michael's girlfriend and I bought dinner for all three, oh, and uh, wow. and swingers isn't cheap. So I think I was negative forty bucks for the next month. But uh, but wow, he came dude. over to my table, yeah, and I see this mountain of a man, you right. know, and he introduced himself, and he goes, "Don't worry, kid. The waitress ratted you out. I always get to the bottom of things." And <laughs> hard, hard. and he sat down, and 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 he goes, "You know, we talked. He goes, you know, I'm just really honored you bought my dinner. What you know, what was going on?" I said, "Well." I heard this thing. And he goes, oh. And I told him the Reader's Digest story where his wife said, hey, you know, I'm pregnant with another kid. You, uh, It's time for you to give up your hobby of being an actor. Wow. Time to get to work. And I think he was selling door-to-door vacuum cleaners. Wow. So man. he said, my wife's going to kill me, but went to a cold call. And then he made his, his mark. And he talked with me about that. I was like, don't give up. I'm going to hear about you one day. We'll work together, I hope, one day. And just, yeah, you know, it was it, it changed my life and it's cool because uh i talked to michael when i got to give my condolences he and i got to reconnect and we talked about it about you know like i i don't know where i would be if i had thrown in the towel that's incredible that you is know, incredible paul sorvino like had a huge you know impact him yeah he was a good man and I just wish I had a chance to thank him in person before he passed. But, yeah. But I'm glad I get to talk to his son now, you know. It's, that is it's cool. That's an incredible story, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how it should be, right? I, I think my issue sometimes is with certain artists is they want to believe that we've elevated to where above other people it's like no art is meant to bring people together man not to divide or act like you're better than the next guy totally and the fact that someone like paul sorvino or tilda swinton or even sid and marty croft those guys you know Mm want to mentor you and 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 pass on good you know advice because they've been there as opposed to hoarding it or keeping it to themselves they share it and pay it forward and that's always been a good lesson those are the people i tend to gravitate to and you know in this field Yeah. yeah how soon after that conversation could you even think, did you get the Mayans? <laughs> uh, I, gosh. Was I it mean, years later or was it probably? It was a couple years later, I okay. think. Yeah. You're still grinding after that. And grinding hard. And uh, a couple of things had happened. Not much. But, uh, you know, like I said, I always had a face for radio. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Sports Illustrated uh, covers were out. I, I, <laughs> yeah. And you, so you auditioned for Mayans? You just... I had a different kind of audition. I basically had an agent that was BSing me. It was resting on his laurels. And uh, I, he was like, yeah, there, there's no interest in you whatsoever, that nobody wants to see you. And so I said, wow. okay, cool. I had nothing to lose at this point. And I don't recommend this to any actor out there. But <laughs> I, I took some flowers and a bottle of wine, and I rode up to the casting agent. 
and they have this big door and kind of man. nudged my way in the door. Dude, you're amazing. And, yeah. and I said, and I'm kind of hot and sweaty from riding out in the heat. Right. And I said, hey, is such and such here? And the people in the office are like, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's doing a reading right now. I'm like, well, I need to speak with her. Oh. And these the other actors, like for some like happy show, they're kind of like, oh my God, who's this guy in here? He's going to kill us. And, and the next thing I know, I have all these people looking at me in the casting agent. She came out and I said, hey, these are for you. <laughs> I said, I heard uh, word on the street is there's a show that's going to be out about motorcycles and some real bad hombres. Is that true? And she goes, is that the word on the street? And I go, yeah. And she goes, well, are you, you know, do you have credits? I'm like, yes. Are you in the union? Yes. You know, are you studying? Yes, I am. She's like, why don't you leave your, your name and number and I'm going to get back to you. And I'm thinking, yeah. I hope so. Right. And then she goes, was that your motorcycle that interrupted my audition <laughs> with my actors? I'm like, yeah, real sorry about that. And she goes, I'm not. You better burn out when you leave. I want to hear it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I think, and she Dude, uh, advocated for me. Wendy O'Brien, she advocated for me. And Shout out to Wendy. Uh, yeah, man. right? I got to read the script and I liked it. And uh and then after that, that's when I, I did the first round with Kurt, and I didn't think I got it. What's your age? you say anything to your agent? Yeah, like, nothing. Nothing. I, uh, and after I did the first round, no. But then I fired him. Thank you. Good. And he said, yeah. Let me get a cut of that. Right. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, well, they had no interest in you anyway. You were never going to be yeah. seen. After I'd already been seen for one round, and I thought I lost wow. it. And then they called me and said, no, there was an audio video clipping of you. Uh, we need the network wants to see you again. Can you come in? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and uh, I went in. That's when I met Elgin face to face, and I did my scene with him. And uh, then they called me the next day and said, "You know, this role is yours if you want it." And boom, right. yeah. boom. Did you, did you at that point know that Elgin came from our world at all? At that point? I totally knew that. Okay, okay. I'll be <laughs> honest. Part of me, part of me was super nervous because I'm like, "Oh man, you know, he's this. You know, if this is too close to home. I might not get the job." Yeah. And of course, the day it happened to be super cold. I was wearing a crucified skin on my hoodie, and I was like, "I just blew it." Yeah, I just outed myself. And he goes, "Oh, don't worry, you already got the job." Wow, <laughs> dude. Yeah. that's fucking amazing, yeah. man. And that man has changed my life. Um, yeah. Do you remember when you did once you heard the news? Like, what was the? I honestly, I collapsed and slept for two days yes. because wow. the first time I didn't, I, I thought I didn't have it. I couldn't sleep. I was so depressed. You know, like oh, I mean, I've been. So you're you know. pretty hard on yourself and you don't get things? Like well, that? I mean, this one I was just because I was just sort of like, you know, did, did I, where did I go wrong? Did yeah. I, I was totally second guessing myself, but it was just an audio clipping thing with the camera frame. And, and uh, so when I got it, you know, I'd stayed up all night, the whole night before, you know, just making sure, because we had to read for several different characters. So it wasn't just one. We yeah. didn't even know who the characters were. And uh, so I stayed up an extra, I was going on fumes. So I think when they told me, you know, and I did get the backup email to confirm it, boom, I was out for two yeah, days. Man, yeah, fuck. yeah. And then, you know, and Hank was changed. born. Hank was born. Who I fucking love, dude. <laughs> and like, I love you're sensitive. I love you're oh, tough. Thanks. I love fucking. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh my god, and you fall, fall, like going after um the bartender girl. You had feelings oh, nails, for. Oh my god, it crushed me, dude. Yeah. Your yeah. character is just awesome, man. Ah, oh, thanks. It's. He's a tough one. Yeah. He's hard to carry around sometimes. I'm not going to lie. And how much is that character parts of you? Uh, some of the moments that you mentioned that you liked, uh, that was real life. That I, I mean, it's never good to internalize and hang on to things, but I'll hang on to something real. And if I can utilize it in a moment like that and expel it there, I will. Yeah. I'd gone through a little bit of a heartbreak like that way before like maybe eight nine months before mm. so i just kind of held on to him like this is where you're gonna let this go and it's hard it's because you're it's like you know a bird you're carrying it around yeah yeah you know and then uh later on and i think yeah that same episode well my father had passed two days before on that episode so i was i was it was like 40 freaking degrees it was raining uh and they have the scene where they take you know, the new patch, my prospect, they take him away in the ambulance and I'm in the shed watching him being yeah. taken away and I come unglued a little bit. Well, uh, they had a photo of my father on top upper camera left because I couldn't see with all the cameras, the ambulance because the shot was too far. And I'm looking at my father in that scene. Oh. And uh, I, you know, and it wasn't that was, a, that was a heavy scene with that guy. Was nice. Oh man, that yeah. kid was great too, man. Yeah, yeah, it was heavy and 
You know, it's weird because I knew the script, what was going to happen, but I didn't know life was going to come into it that way. And, you know, I, when I saw the ambulance, you know, scene, I was thinking of my father being taken away. It just got very real. Yeah. And it wasn't, I wasn't, I don't ever try to act. I right. just try to tell the story and be honest. And But I didn't realize there was so much of me at that moment that was coming out and I was hurting. But I look back at it now and I was like, well, you know, that was a moment I had with my father that I'll, it'll be immortalized for yeah. me. And I got to do something for him. And it was beautiful because he was there, mm-hmm. you know, because I had his picture with me, you know. And and, uh, and so, and the thing about Elgin is he will allow you to do what you need to do to get there. And he has your back. Yeah. And, and even if there's guys that don't see eye to eye on things or maybe not click at times, the one common thing we all agree on is everybody loves that guy and we have his back. Yeah. And that's a blessing. I mean, it is. Yeah, you can see the, the difference of the first season then when he takes over the last two. You know what I mean? Like, right. The way it's shot. And music. just the music and like mm-hmm. the, black, the hardcore and the different things you hear and see and the shirts, just everything yeah. from our world. Like, it's, And it's nice. That means a lot to me. Yeah. I'll be honest because the first couple seasons, I love it, but there was a disconnect because I'm just sort of like, where do, you know, like, to to it was just a disconnect <laughs> right like right but when you know i was hearing uh you know all these all these other bands come in and bands that i know i was just sort yeah. of like <sighs> yeah like they had bootlicker they put them on there i was just like wait what and and I heard that. yeah and a lot of the old you know punk rockers and skinheads from like europe and people that i've known through the years they resurface more like we thought that was you but you had hair mm. or <laughs> that was you and, and and it made them happy and i felt like good there's my tribe yeah you know right. they're, they're watching the show and that means a lot yeah, so it's just like, it's, you know, mind stuff, but just like seeing like uh like i friend early mexi mike on there our friend loki on there right. and bj betts was just on one yeah he's a good dude great dude great tattoo and no he artist. brought matt pike on set oh wow and i got to hang out with matt and like as matt i had matt hang out my trailer we just hung out the whole time and he was there the last day of shooting and i know matt from you know when i was a bouncer at the hardcore shows in san francisco wow all those guys oh jefe from no effects yeah aaron good dude yeah he's on there wow too. yeah he's yeah on there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah so it it just it, that part makes me feel a little more grounded mm-hmm. because i then I'm, i when you know where you come from and you feel grounded, it's a lot easier to do the work, I think. And mm-hmm. I'm not just in Hollywood, so to speak. It's like yeah. there's part of my tribe there. And, man, I'm stoked they're there. It just yeah. feels more real. Yeah, then mm-hmm. my friend Katie, she's married to Jason Ellis. Mm-hmm. She has, like, three speaking scenes. She's, like, a sw- squatter girl on the last season. She's on there, too, Oh, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the dude who ran, like, that crazy meth mountain, he had a black flag tattoo. And the crucified <laughs> meth head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I watch all. I see all that yeah. stuff. I'm like, oh man, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you feel that connection. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. No, they. Uh, Elgin had the meth mountain shirts made with a crucified meth head, and I was wearing that. So he's like, oh, that's that's your thing, huh? It's like, no, dude, it's it's a shirt. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, I love Coco, oh, man. Oh my god, so heavy, man. Yeah, his thing with his addiction, and then like his daughter coming back, and like yeah. all that. Just, yeah, it's so good. I mean, every character, like. You, you, you feel for every single person. It's not just one character. You know what I'm saying? Every right. single has their own thing. Yeah, well, and that's the thing about it. And people, I, it's almost like a bad joke we play on ourselves, you know? Every character on that show, we deserve to die. We're doing dirt. We're doing bad things. Yeah. But just when you could hate somebody for that, you see their humanity. I know, mm-hmm. man. You know? You, love, yeah. Yeah. you see, you know, uh, you know, like like Hank, you know, he loves his mom, yes. you know, and he's willing to, to marry a pregnant girl because he thinks she's the greatest thing on the planet <laughs> yeah. and, and doesn't want her to be alone. He wants to take care of her mm-hmm. or, you know, you, you've, you've got, you know, Creeper, same thing. Like, I love his character. He really yes. killed it last season. I heard he's like legit cat too. He's legit and yeah. he's got a big heart. Yeah, Joseph... You know, Gino, Emilio. Gino, yeah, Emilio, you know, yeah. Danny P. Those, dude, those Edward are James guys. almost, dude, American yeah. Bee, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fucking OG G. legend. Yeah, yeah. How, is it cool working with him? Must be awesome. It's rad. I almost got fired uh, from one of my jobs back in the 90s because uh, uh, I was cooking in San Francisco and Edward James almost was speaking at a Barnes and Nobles for his photography book. And I just had to go. 
And the chef's like, well, you only have a half hour for lunch. And, you know, and I go, well, I want a longer lunch. And he's like, well, if you do, you might not have a job. And I'm thinking, I work holidays. I work weekends when people are sick. You know, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> come on, man, I'm going to go. And I went and stayed because I just had to be, I had to feel that inspiration. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we talked about it. And he goes, isn't it cool we're on the same team now? Dude, and he's, he's awesome. super rad. He's, he's so super great. Super nice. Man. That was a that was mind blowing. Yeah. 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 And he's then a good man. fuck man, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, Nestor, yeah, great character too. Yeah, man. Gino's rad. Um, Had dinner Ezekiel, with that dude. He, he, yeah, he um his his character. I have it's weird. You know, I I I don't know how it'll, it'll play out, but man, Hank vetted him and vouched for him. Mm. And what you know the discoveries that they're having over his character. And he's such now. a pretty boy. He reminds me of he he's he's the version of from Sons of Anarchy, Jack. Right. Yeah. Jack. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's like handsome. He's in good shape. He's like not really tatted up. Right. But he's a badass. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's cra- It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. His what is what he's on the show? Yeah. We can't give it away. But season five, yeah. which is fucking exciting. I know, man. huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what the reveals are going to be. You know, because right. like I said, we're all going to have to pay the piper. How, right. How's it going to go? You know, I know. So I and, they don't, and they don't tell you. That's what I'm going to ask yeah. you. Like, nah. And and honestly, before, in terms of employment and paying the bills, you're like, oh man, I hope I don't die. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's you know because everybody dies on this yeah. show. Yeah, Drea talked about that from Sopranos right. on here, but but then they cut, they bring it back, showing like you know, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, not that I want it for the character, but if Hank Hank had to go, I. Would like to think he'd have a glorious death, like it, you know. Right. Like he, I think he would have had a, a good life, you know. Is and, it sad when like characters, like do you feel like even though it's just acting, like oh that guy, I'm not gonna see that guy anymore. Show yeah, anymore. well, you get attached to him. Yeah, but you know, there's times like I remember one season it was a rough one. I remember when I, I always put my wardrobe away, I fold it away nicely in the trailer, and I really leave it as clean as possible. Yeah. But I remember just saying, "I'll see you when I see you." Like. You kind of you got to go do your thing for a while. Like I need a break from you, like because his character he internalizes a lot, and yeah. he's got a lot on his shoulders. You know, he's trying to hold up the club. You know, between the old guys and the new guys, and he's very conflicted. Mm. And whatever he does is is gonna you know it's, it, it just it never works out well for him. That's why I think he's kind of a a broken hearted guy because mm-hmm. he's he believes in his club, he right. loves it, but then yeah. he questions it, and he questions you know the people around him. Yeah, oh. I love Carla Beretta. She's the best. Yo, in real life, she is one of the most celestial that. human beings in the world. Like her it's almost like so yeah. gangster. Her character yeah. is so awesome, man. Like yeah. so cold and like yeah. And that's really her husband on the show. I, I Guillermo. Remember. Yeah, okay. who's wonderful. Yeah, they're the best. Okay, and you know, uh, still, you know, I talk with them, you know, quite frequently. And like I said, she's just one of the most soft spoken. Angelic celestial human being deliver me. Humble he's a Venezuela, right? Yeah, super humble, nice. and he is too. He's he's also he does comedy, and he's actually oh, very really? funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from his character, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's. And then Emily too, the ca- Sarah. Uh, Sarah's super rad. Yeah, she's good. Good people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have Vanessa. We have Emily, uh, who plays you know Coco's daughter. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. I mean, they're just good yeah, yeah. people. You know, like yeah. people you see around, you smile, and it's like, yeah, uh, it's you important. know, yeah. yeah. And now Raul, Raul, I love Raul. His character's yeah. hard, man. Right? Yeah, Dude. yeah. He, uh, we were just in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, I was out there with Raul and Joseph and Emilio and Irby, uh, and then three of the Suns guys. We had Boone, Rusty, and uh, DL. We were all out there. Just hanging? No, there was, we were raising money. Uh, the Lakota Nation uh, the Education, uh, they have a fund for the kids. So we got them backpacks and school oh, supplies. Cool. And it was for Indian motorcycle or Indian rally. It was a motorcycle thing they had for several days. And everybody went out there and busted ass. And they raised money. And we, we all got to spend time together. And it was really cool. Yeah, it seems you guys have relationships off the show, like friendships. And- yeah, like Emilio, he's... The big brother, you know, yeah. he's the elder of the tribe. It's OG, yeah, 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 yeah. What about like other like? What about like biker? Do you guys get like other bike? Like, I mean, there's there's guys they've had you know in background that have been in the clubs on our show. I know Sons was a different gamut, but uh, yeah, they commented that maybe have right. advice on things. But I do know 
a lot of the clubs, mm-hmm. you know, the power life, the yeah. power clubs, yeah. as they call them. And, uh, you know, with Hank, because, you know, before the show, I've known and had personal, not political, personal relationships with clubs. Uh, I always try to take that element of respect to Hank, to the show, all the time. Yeah. Because... Mm-hmm. We're portraying their world. Now, granted, it's television. They don't, you know, there's certain protocols and bylaws that won't, we wouldn't have in the show yeah. out of respect and for other reasons. But but I just try to bring that respect level to it. And I spend a lot of time at a lot of the motorcycle functions anyway because that's my community also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would never want someone to say, hey, man, you, you, know, you don't respect what we do or, you know, this is just not cool. And, and, I, and there's sometimes, you know, when I was doing the character originally, I did make some calls to some of the old timers. I mean, old timers. And uh, they'd sit and have dinner with me and we would talk openly about it. And they were very trusting and very open to a fault. But they knew that what I was going to take was I was going to use for the, for the best you know possible scenario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, for me personally, I can only speak for myself. I really... Try to hang on to that. Yeah, you know? I think I think the same thing with Sopranos. You probably met with people, right? Do you know what I mean? Saying yeah. like, yeah. respectful, right? The most on point, and legit. So you're not trying to paint a picture that's not really in it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I just don't want to. And I mean, I'm out there riding a the bike, so if I get yeah. pulled up, sometimes I have guys pull me and want to talk, and we talk, and wow. they're like, "Wow, it's really cool to see out here doing this. Like, you can actually do this. Like, hey, I don't have <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, no, we I, ride motorcycles most of your life. You know, when I was a kid, I, I was I, I still had my first motor scooter when oh, I was a little kid. Awesome. I think it had a lawnmower engine on it. Yeah, <laughs> um, nice. But I got a ride on my first chopper when I was about three. Uh, wow. Of course, my godfather was a cop. <laughs> oh, really? My little wow. sister, who's who's super, you know, on, on the straight and narrow, her godfather was a biker. And his name was uh, Barstow Tommy, who lives out in Barstow. Barstow Tommy. Uh, and Barso Tommy made choppers. I mean, he fabricated them. He did the whole deal. He's still, you know, is, is mechanic, and he's just got some cool ass stuff and you know, old cars and bikes in his garage. And and uh, I have a very close relationship with him. And he got me my first Easy Rider poster when I was like three or four, wow. and an Evil Knievel poster. Yeah. And I remember just being like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad didn't want it on the wall right. because of what the references were. But I was a kid. I just always saw it was a motorcycle. <laughs> I had choppers going. Yeah. <laughs> then my dad let me watch Easy Riders. I was like, oh, this isn't really about motorcycles, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this, but yeah, I, I just try to have that connection. Yeah. You know, if I was doing a military show, I would want to understand the ins and outs as much as I could, too, of course, and respect yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So when you're in the mines, can you audition for other things? I can, and I've done it's a like couple things. But I'll be honest, I when I signed on for this because I wanted it so bad, Yeah. you know, I feel like 100% of the loyalties all the time are for Elgin in the show. I love that, man. You know, because it's like, you know, come on. It's like it's not like I'm Brad Pitt and I, I'm going to be doing, you know, a cologne commercial or yeah. or going to be doing some really cool things. I mean, I, I would I hope to, right. but yeah. I'm just sort of like I, I think the best thing to do is put all my energies into this at the moment because this, you know, is something special. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're, yeah. and you're killing it at it and it's uh, working. Thank and- you. Would you ever want to do comedy or anything, something like that? I've done comedy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've done comedy shows. I, I like comedy, actually, mm-hmm. you know. I like a good story. You yeah. know, uh, like I said, I, the one comedy that I did recently, well, during Mayans, I did Better Things. Okay. And uh, I played a guy who worked at Dodger Stadium with security guard and uh, Sam, who's Pamela Adlon, and her uh, daughter and family friend. I'm trying to get them out of Dodger Stadium. And we end up, you know, striking a, a small friendship because I'm trying to get them from point A to point B. And that was a fun show to do because – she, Pamela Adlon, is just a, a force to be reckoned with. Show writer, creator, the lead. She, you know, does all the, the music soundtracks. She doesn't micromanage it. She just knows what she wants for her shows. And right, yeah. everybody on set was super happy, and the cast and the crew, everybody was cool, and and it was fun, and yeah. a lot of laughs, and it was it was a good show. Yeah. yeah. So there's more things you want to do, obviously, with acting. Yeah. I'll do anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I don't want 
I don't know if I'd ever want to play a biker again, to be honest. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't right. want to be the hoodlum. Bouncer. Uh, right. You want to typecast yourself. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. And I think that's why I really, you know, try to change up the look when I can. And, you know, yeah. I, I just keep certain tattoos out of certain areas Mr. on purpose. Ink. You were Mr. 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 Ink, Ink right? And that shows you what they thought of people with tattoos. Yeah. It was so easy to categorize you like that. Yeah. Plus, you know. But I feel like now they're more open with having tattoos. and Right. Like, True. In this world, you know what I mean, right? And and you know, like I said, it's back then it was a lot harder. It was almost like, yeah, oh, not, never going to happen. Yeah. What yeah. about like actor you love to work with? Who would I love to work with in the yeah. future? Oh man, I mean, Sam Rockwell. Ooh, that wow. guy is just okay. so. A, nobody mentions him. He's right. Incredible, man. Sam, I did a film with Sam Rockwell. You did? Oh yeah. yeah. When? In New York. <laughs> what, what the hell? What do you mean? What's it called? I was just like uh, an extra. It was called Mercy. Okay. Oh, and it was really came out the same time as like the Rob, um, Mel Gibson film called Ransom. Okay. It was kind of like the same principle. Right. Like a kid gets kidnapped and they got to find him. And and he it was like one of his first roles. I right. Think, and he played one of the kidnappers. Sam oh, wow. No way. He's yeah. auditioned for it or just... I got it was like a casting. I was working wow. at Fat Farm across the street from you. Yes. And then they were like, "Yo, you should come in. You should come." You have in. the long dreads then? Yeah. And so I'm on the corner and I, I like push like this one of the main characters who's like tr- sitting on the phone trying to, you know, make the connection with Sam Rockwell and he's like, "Where are you?" and you're arguing on the phone. I'm like in the background for sick of it all like head down. Nice. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Wow, was it a sock hat from the 90s maybe? No, it was okay. like a head like a I remember ear those. warmer type thing, I remember like that. head beanie type. Did you make the cut in the movie? Yes. I, yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. You so sad card? Red. No. Okay. I didn't have a speaking part. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. So if I you say didn't one have word, to speak. If I say one <laughs> word, I'll get I'll get SAG. You're SAG eligible, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. If I recall, those things change so much. That's yeah. good medical insurance, though, right? Is that true? I'm stoked that I have medical okay. insurance. Yeah. I heard SAG's like the best. Really. Yeah. That's that's I think that's something because we you know when you're like go to a punk rock show and yeah, stage dive, you can break your neck, ah, whatever, I'll be fine. But now you're kinda like, <laughs> Yeah, I'll be fine because I have insurance. But yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah, it's kind of I like having it. It gives me a little peace of mind because I'm out there on the bike. Yeah, man. You know, and that's something I think about. Is... So, do you have a stunt man? A stunt no. double? You do all your Hell I'd no. actually do mine. Yeah, that's right. I figured. Yeah. I figured. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some people have yeah. stunt doubles. You know what I mean? No, nah, nah, I was on, lucky. Man, In fact, on. yeah, there's one time uh, we had a couple stunt riders that claimed they knew how to ride, uh. and they didn't know how to ride. And I did some of the scenes, and there were some. It was in the first pilot, and. Conditions were pretty gnarly. I mean, I was even a little going. How could like, they Ooh. fake that? I mean, yeah, yeah they can't they do that. Get themselves killed. I was so mad. I was wow, so mad because wow. the guy kept dropping my bike and and uh, yeah. Wow. He had a bit of an attitude that the day I met him because I was, hey, how you doing? He didn't after that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I ended up having to do the stunt with the stunt riders, and those guys are so disciplined and humble yeah. and awesome. Yeah. And that's why I knew something was was off about this dude. Mm. Yep. <laughs> so where is that Mayans Clubhouse at? Like, where, where is that located? Well, we have uh, two. One want the exact address. Come on, man. <laughs> well, we have them over at the studios, but one is external where, you know, you see the bikes pull up and that whole deal is an external stage. Okay. And then we have the um, sound stage where it's still the clubhouse, but we have all the, you know, the bottles in the bar and, wow. and you know, the room where we have Templo and everything. It's it's and pretty that's nice setup. Somewhere in the LA okay, area. Yeah. Cool. Come on, Toby. Come on. Man. Somewhere in the LA area. Go get a picture yeah. on the porch. Mm-hmm. Like the I'm house. sure. I'm sure yeah. we could arrange that. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, oh, is yeah. there a director that you would like to? Oh, that's a good question. Like a one you're like, oh yeah, this is Guillermo del Toro. Mm. I would love to work with him. You know, just something. You know, like like a supernatural character or. Okay. You know, oh, yeah, I was gonna ask you like a Marvel. Would you be down for that? Uh, which one? Like a superhero or something? Marvel. I, I mean, I totally would. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, I would love to be to a, all that. a good antihero, or you know. Yeah. yeah. I just want something that's quality. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've thought about writing? I do write. I'm still Excellent. working on something. I'm finally been able to get that one down and that in motion. And uh, Zeki Zeki produced uh, Soul Dad too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I remember. See, the lights are going on now. Yeah. I haven't exactly, had coffee exactly yet. Produced that, yeah. Yeah, so. that was heavy. That was hard. That that was a short. I'm glad it wasn't short one. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was brutal. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, I, so I had a hard time with that. I almost didn't do it, the role, because um, I shoot a 17-year-old girl in the head, and I was, like, not down with that. Right. But because it was a female director, and they did a lot of the, you know, we talked about it. Because it was not it's heavy, and and, and heavy. it made sense in the storyline. It wasn't gratuitous violence. There right. was a purpose for that happening. But even doing it with the the young gal, I was just so she was like, just toughen up, grab my hair, pull the trigger. Because I was really, you know, I wanted to make sure she was cool with it. Yeah, because I was, I wasn't, and I should have been cool. But it was just something about it that really was a little nerve wracking. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So stressful. Yeah. Well, basically, I mean, in, in a nutshell. You know, I'm punishing the mom. Like, the only way I can hurt you is by taking your daughter yeah. out. And, yeah, it's an eeny, meeny, miny, mo moment. Mm-hmm. And technically, the mom was supposed to go. And I look at the mom and boom. Wow. And so it was not. Yeah, it was a little Jeez. gut-wrenching. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes doing scenes like that and your character, mostly Hank probably, you bring that home with you sometimes? Yeah. I mean, there's a scene we did in season three where I'm going off on my prospect. I'm just berating him. Yeah. And that. and at one point, I, you know, Elgin's like, you good? Because, you know, you're doing great. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm doing great, but I feel like, you know, because yeah. it does become real. You feel like you're being mean, like really, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I go, I, remember that one. I felt like, I felt like there was a part of my father that was talking to me like I was him, mm. you know. And this was just, you know, just a moment, you know, and yeah. it was just, I became my dad and I had to be my dad. Not that my dad was always like that, but in that moment I was my dad and I would, and just his reactions, the way he would wince, like, you know, with his eyes and you could tell it was, it was hitting home for him. I was, I was, you know, pushing buttons and triggers were going off. Yeah. And yeah. of course afterwards, you know, we give each other a big hug, you know, but, but you just, ha- you know, and it was like, we have to. You always know that you got to get there to make this happen. This is what we do. And when we yell cut, we're good. Yeah. Just to, just to turn off like that, though. It's For like, me, it's residual. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it is. And that's why, like I say, when I, I put him, hey, you know, put him away for a while and say, you can stay there. I mean yeah. it. I do. It seems very therapeutic for you. Yeah, because, like I said, you Especially know. Especially this role. Yeah, I mean, they're very raw characters. They are, man. They you are. know, and, and I know, you know, not speaking for him. But I know Joseph, you know, he brings a lot of real. I know Emilio does. I love doing scenes with Emilio because even though we're prepared when we get there, we'll run the scene 100 times just to stay in the groove. And yeah. he's so disciplined, and I love that about him. And he's all about the work. And But there's always a sense of real that, that goes with it, and we'll talk about it afterwards because then we're just trying to get to it yeah. and do the best delivery, the most honest one. and. And then beefing like some of the Aryan dudes on there from the other crews and stuff like that. I know you, yeah, definitely fucking. That's probably, a trigger. Probably put down a couple of Nazis in your, in your life. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. But then seeing them in the show, you know what I mean, the characters. It's it's kind of yeah, it's a trip. I remember yeah. Marilyn Manson was like a Nazi in fucking yeah. Sons of Anarchy. I remember that. Yeah. Rollins was in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and see Rollins do it and do so well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that was, was so sick. impressive. Right. You yeah, know, Marilyn Manson too. He did great. You know the thing about Marilyn Manson. I don't. The first time I saw Marilyn Manson play, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. You know where the bottom of the hill in San Francisco yeah, is? Dude. He was doing a show there. Wow. This is before their first tour. Before they blew Smallest up. Smallest club. There was there was probably twenty people, maybe thirty tops. People just happened to struggle in that night. That guy put on such an intense show. I'll never forget it. And he was looking at the crowd just and and he was intense. And if he did that. For 30 people and can do that for what however many thousands he yeah, played yeah, yeah. kudos to him because it was a hell of a show and i didn't wow. know who he was yeah mm-hmm. and uh you know that's the one time i did see him and man it was something else wow yeah that mm-hmm. guy could bring it that guy's got a presence mm-hmm. on stage yeah. Fuck. what uh you we touched on a little bit about you writing like what type of stuff do you like to write about well, yeah the, that's true well the one i'm, I'm writing about uh i put it off a couple times it's there's a scene the theme has to do with the choice of suicide mm. wow but it's not a depressing suicidal movie we're trying or script really trying not to take that route we're just trying to kind of explore what it is where people get to that point where they make that decision the alienation the justification uh the conscience um 
mindset to not think about the effect it will have on other people or, yeah. or even the unknowing effect. I'm interested in that as well. And I think some, about that. Mm-hmm. And, and it really, uh, that, that one, you know, and it's hard cause it comes from something that actually did happen. So it, you know, right. and, and I think I stopped after, you know, season three when we had our prospect who, you know, took himself out yeah. and then with my dad's passing, it was just too much to go to at the time. So, mm-hmm. but I've kind of gone back with that one. And there's another one that, um, uh, you know, it's a ghost story, but it's not, you know, I, I like the psychological paranormal stuff, not the blood and gut stuff. That's yeah, all, right. you know, the gratuitous stuff. I like the stuff that really kind of keeps you up in the moment, like, well, what if it's really out there? Or, or you know, <laughs> what is, you know, that stuff I really like. Which you question and think about, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, especially when you're out riding on the bike on the freeway out in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing out there going like, yeah, I wonder if like the Chupacabra is going to come get me. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, this one, you know, is based <laughs> off something that happened, and and uh, so I'm trying to finish that one up too. So yeah, nice. just my mind never shuts off. Yeah, I'll be yeah. honest. I got up early to come speak with you today because I sometimes don't wake up till three or four because really? I work through the night. Wow. Yeah, I usually call it a day around nine or ten in the morning. Well, I appreciate that. And no, I'm you have, you have no coffee yet either. No coffee. But the cool thing was, I actually was super. Like, I got a good night's sleep last night. Awesome. I was, you know, stoked because I was like, oh, man, I don't want to, you know, you know, <laughs> be an insomnia, like, you know. like. So are you a big coffee? You drink a lot of coffee? No, nah, I really don't. I just, you know, I have this thing where I like to meet up with my guys. We ride out and we meet up and we have our morning coffee at four in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And wow. <laughs> that doesn't keep, so that does keep you up probably. Yeah. Well, I like to go to the gym and work out and nighttime. You know, I'm a, I just something about the night mm. because to me, LA, if you go down Sunset Boulevard when it's in gridlock, you just feel that tension, oh, that yeah. energy, and that intensity, and it's a bit much. It can it be is. for anybody. It's horrible. <laughs> but at night, when it's kind of quiet and peaceful and everybody's sleeping and you can start at Doheny and go all the way to Cesar Chavez and the lights are green the whole way and ride. Everybody's sleeping. That's the time where I make it. LA's mine or, or you know, that's no, where nice. it belongs yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah, You guys can have it for the rest of the day. I'll sleep. And I just feel that that's where I can bring in things and take them on or I can go over lines or any sides that I have to do for yeah. any, any work. And it's just, that's just how it works for I me. Get that. So you're up to like five Definitely. in the morning usually? I'm up to like, Sometimes nine or ten is when I can fall asleep in the morning. Yeah. Wow, man, you're yeah. legit. Like yeah. I know. Wow, man. Yeah, I just some about the night and yeah. seeing Hollywood when it's quiet yeah, and it's, it's asleep. So nice. I, it is I, nice. I, I yeah. get something. That's I mean, I, I had this feeling kind of riding my bike. Yeah, <laughs> my yeah, bicycle. Yeah. Your electric bike. I just got home. one. I'll ride with you. Right. I yeah. just got one. Nice. I'm looking to get one too. He loves it. I Game love changer. it, and yeah. especially at night when I leave here sometimes. Yeah. At Toby's house, and it's just like. I'm gonna ride home. It's so peaceful, like just the that side nice. streets, and See, I want quiet. someone to ride with. Yeah, there See, you I'm, go, I'm scared yeah. someone's gonna try to take my bike from me. That's why I felt like a little kid. <laughs> Nobody's gonna take your bike from oh, you. No okay. way. Yeah, no. no. Well, what what happened was I raced BMX when I was a kid. Yeah, okay. me too. Yeah. See, Mike Buff. You know who Mike Buff yes. is? The legend. Okay. Legend. Idolized Mike Buff. He was like the BMX evil Knievel. Well, he hit me up on Instagram one day, and I was like, uh, "Wait, what? this is really Mike Buff?" He goes, "Oh, you know, we should talk sometime." I'm like. Okay, Mike Buff, I'll talk to you whenever you want. <laughs> Mike Buff. He showed up at the event that I did at the Viper Room. Oh, he was there? Oh, Holy wow. crap. So uh, he goes, we should have lunch. And I said, yes, we should have lunch, Mike Buff. You know, and <laughs> So we, we met at the Grove, had lunch. And he goes, hey, man, walk me in my car. I said, sure. And there was these two beautiful bikes, his own signature bikes. And he goes, this one's for you. Oh, my and God. And I was like, you want to talk about feeling like I was a kid oh all over again? God. And he goes, let's go ride. So we rode on Pan Pacific Park, and I'm riding with my BMX hero, Mike Buff. And it was such a, like, and and I think those are the moments, like Paul Sorvino told me, you get where you need to go, son. You're going to have a life you can never possibly imagine. Boy, was he right. And that was one of those moments. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, And I was just riding around with, you know, with Mike and we That's become friends. It was like stepbrothers. Did we just become best friends? You know, it was it was uh, super. That's cool. one of the best man. movies yeah. ever written. Oh, yeah, amazing. right, Movie. right, definitely. So you ride around Mike Pop. That's cool. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's yeah. what's the electric bike company? What is it? What's one? Well, of he's he, well, it's his signature Mike. Okay, I'll Buff. look at. I'll yeah, look at like I'll show. You. What's the one you have? 
Oh, it's it's crap. Okay, we're not going to mention the company. <laughs> we're not going to mention the company on here. Let's just say yeah. Mike Buff all we the way. We should have electric bike crew, man, because I'm trying to get one right now, too. That's sick. Man, Old dudes on bikes in their 50s. I'm all bikes. about it. We I look better it. than most guys in their 20s Dang, nowadays, damn right. man. Goddamn right. You know? I mean, look at us. That's the whole thing. So it was like, it's true. What yeah. do you think that is? It's because of the the life we lived in the music we into? Yes. Yeah. Yes. For sure. That's an absolute yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we were told... Live fast, die young. I don't think anybody really wanted to die. No. Live no. fast, yes, but at the same time, that lust for life and that, that weird appreciation for it when you don't realize at the time and that fury, everything keeps us young. I believe that. I young till we too. died. Seven seconds, man. I, believe I don't want to grow up. Descendants. All that stuff, <laughs> yeah. dude. I just, I, I'm there, and I Me think too, that's man. what it is, and I think that's, people trip out. You're 52? I'm like, yeah, what about it, man? <laughs> and, uh, I feel like 50s are my favorite age. Yeah, right I, now. it's pretty amazing. I feel like the best I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. 50, 50s. 50 was the best year of my life ever. Wow. Yeah, and somebody told me it was going to be like that. And once it happened, I was like, you're right. Yeah, you look yeah. great too, man. Uh, you you did too, absolutely. though. I mean, look at I mean, look at us like that's the whole thing. You think you're average fifty nah, plus man. year old, and you're like, that's not us. Like, yeah. you know, I went to my high school reunion. It's definitely you did. Not I'd average. love to go yeah. to mine. I never went. Yeah, I, was... I, I, me too. But I got kicked out of all six of them. Like, <laughs> he's not getting invited I'm to the reunion, invite. man. <laughs> Maybe now because you might see him on TV. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I, then I don't want to go. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you didn't like me then. You can't like me. But I'd love to see some dudes from my high school. Yeah, you would love it. It's call me names because I skated and I had. They would be loving you Checkered now, dude. Fans. It would all be like wiped yeah. away. Everybody, I'm sure, would just be like stoked to see you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and you've, you've always been a stand up guy. Yeah. You I have. Can. And I know that. And there's things like there's certain things you know about certain people. That's why when I ran into you, I was overjoyed and happy. Me too, man. Because I'll <laughs> tell you what, good conversation, real conversation is so hard to find in this town. Very and when true. you get to experience yes. that and you know, and then there's a connection from something in the past. I love it. Oh, man. man. You know, that's why I was like, no, I'm going to be here. I don't care if I got to stay up for three days. I'm going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just special because that's most of this podcast is about. It's like people from different walks of life that may, they be acting or um, tattooing or skating. We're all connected by this yeah. world yeah. that we that like uh, had such a big impact on us as children. Yeah. You know, it changed yeah. our lives and we, and we found our tribe and people that, all the, the misfits in there. It sounds like cliche and the weirdos and but all it's that. True, and crazy though. different Very home true, lives though. and we all became part of this family. We're still connected. Like you're still gonna see Agnostic Front. Oh, that in was your so 50s, rad. bro. And you're probably yeah. feeling hearing those songs. Yeah. Like, it was so it was rad. I yeah. mean, I was like, Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. stage dive off that three story building right Dude. after the show. Because you got you cause you got your insurance. You're chilling. Yeah. Oh yeah, huh? That's why I should have done it. Damn it. Yeah. yeah but, um do you do you have any regrets in your life? I do. I do. Oh, damn. Okay. He's the uh, first yeah, one to be yeah, like, yeah, most yeah, people, let me think about that. Well, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of things like, okay, I got sober 20 years ago, right? Well, nobody gets sober because their life is awesome. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. Let's just call it for what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even though I haven't talked to him in decades, I got I to gotta tip my hat to Lars Fredrickson. He's the one to help me. You know, get it together and trust Shout me. Shout to Lars, man. Lars. I, I kicked and screamed the whole way. I was very defiant about, you know, getting sober. Uh, not a fun guy to be around. You must be so proud now, man. Dude, I, I hope on. so. Because like I said, I never forget that about him. Yeah. I, you know, I never, and I never will. Uh, That's amazing. I think, I don't know if it regrets the word, but I know that a lot of us would have acted a certain way or done certain things if we had been in our right minds or been in a good place. Mm. And when you try to get in a good place, you can see things and be like, ooh. You know, <clears throat> the hardest yeah. thing about being sober is when they say, oh, you're going to get clarity. Well, sometimes you get the clarity and you see the air of your ways and you're like, right. yeah, I'm not stoked on that. Yeah. But, but I just wish I hadn't been so uh, stubborn with my father. Mm-hmm. You know, that yeah. is my regret. I, You know, and I tell people like, you know, if you're beefing with your dad, yeah, you know, um, you need to find a way. Yeah, life because, is short, man. You never, you never, yeah, you know, it's so I, true. Man. I wish I could call him on the phone, that whole thing. I wish I could give him a hug. Yeah. Uh, there's times I just miss him. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy because, like I said, I've had a couple of guys, friend just uh, lost his father yesterday. And, I, and he goes, I went to see him. It was tough. I'm like, but you got to see him. And trust yeah. me, that, you're going to be so grateful for that. And the one thing... You know, I got a hand to my ex. You know, I went through a breakup recently, but she uh, did say, you know, you're awesome, but there's this angry side to you whenever something comes up about your father. 
you should do something about that or it's going to haunt you. And nope, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And uh, the time came when he was passing. And I'm glad that, you know, I did say goodbye to him. I wish it could have been more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think those are the things, but you learn from that. You're right. And then you tell people like, yeah, you know, if, if you love your kids, love them, you know, and none of us are perfect, but. None of us are perfect. But, but definitely give it the best you can because it does, you know, impact. The rest of their lives. Our man, paths. Everything. Yeah, man. And I think I had to relearn a lot of things on my own without my father. And mm-hmm. I had to learn how to be a man without my father same you know and my dad passed when i was super young i'm sure. sorry to hear that man but yeah, yeah. that's the thing it's like mm-hmm. i had to redefine who i was and what kind of man i wanted to be and yeah. sometimes i'm not proud i have my days but i'm just kind of like i don't want to ever leave here saying was i did i not try to be a good person yeah you know not a person in the spotlight that's kissing nah. babies and, and shaking hands i'm talking like a real decent person that's all you can do in life is do the best yeah. you can with what you're happy you know what i'm saying right. what do you know did you ever get therapy I did, and it was a trip. I just, I, I think what it is for me was I just didn't trust some of these people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like She tried a couple of times. Well, yeah, and it was just like, well, that's very interesting. Is yeah. it? Because it sucks to talk about it, <laughs> you know? And you're really making me uncomfortable. I feel yeah. like you're going to wrap me out now, you know? Yeah. I think there was that. But Tony Soprano can do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have done it because, like I said, you know, I, I don't ever want to get loaded again. And I, yeah. you know, it's not on that checklist. Is that even on your mind? Is that like no. a struggle at all? <clears throat> no, I think it's more. Isn't it like one day at a time or not it, really? 20 it, years. It is. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, I remember second season of Mines, I think it was. It was the whatever my milestone was of sobriety. Yeah. I rode to set. And I'm looking around and, you know, I say hi to people as I'm riding up to the trailer. I was parked in front of my trailer and I just sat and I looked through the window of the trailer and I'm going like, I should be dead. Like I almost checked out before I got sober. Like I was, old, I was ready to go. Wow. And I'm doing this. This is really happening. Your trailer, your trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, they had, you know, they would give special treats for us. Sometimes they'll send ice cream or coffee. They had a guy that was making a lote and it would, that's like my favorite. And I was like, and there's a guy making a lote out there. Wait, is this like, this is your life? Right? Yeah. 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 And, and I think that's what, what it is. Sometimes I have to literally punch myself in the face. Like this is really, you feel like you don't deserve it. Sometimes I went through that. To be honest, because in sobriety, you go through that, oh, man, if you really knew what I was about, you wouldn't like me, or I don't deserve this. And I think what broke that for me was one day, some buddies were in at the rainbow, and they said, hey, man, are you down uh, the street? I'm like, I'm down. I'm like, come on out and eat. And I remember hopping on the bike, and I passed Carney's, you know. And to eat at Carney's, even when I was working a number of jobs to pay the rent in L.A. as a struggling actor, that was a luxury just to go eat there. Yeah. And as I was passing by, I looked over at Carney's and I looked up and there was this huge billboard for Mayans MC. It was this oh, goosebumps. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> Season one um, billboard. And I remember, I think my eyes were watering like the yeah. whole way to the rainbow. Like, you know, for the, what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing allergies, man. You know? <laughs> uh, but I think that's when it was like, wow. Like, you know, I don't think the universe wants their children to suffer, you mm-hmm. know, but yeah. we just have to find that way. Well, just know that you you're 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 amazing actor. Your your character is incredible. You're killing it. You deserve all that shit. Dude. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, it's easy to like think in your head and always be down on yourself or like harp right. on shit in your past, all that. But like, you're killing it, man. It's fucking beautiful, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I never want to forget my past. Yeah, you know, because it keeps you in check. But at the same time, I wouldn't be who I am now. Right. Yeah, if yeah. I didn't, you know, exactly. and yeah. I want to see where I'll be 10 years from now. I plan on being 120. So me too, man. Yeah. Fuck, yeah, I'm already 52, bro. Look at me, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to go like 100. I'm trying to do 100 right? push-ups on my 100th birthday. All right. Yes. All right. Nice. Okay. Um, are you, are you consider yourself an optimist or pessimist? I'm somewhere in the middle on that yeah, one. Yeah, you're a realist like my wife. <laughs> yeah. I'm a realist. <laughs> yeah, keep it yeah, if I see it for what it is, it's what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Yeah. yeah. Ah, maybe it's a goose who's having a bad day. <laughs> no, it's it's a duck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, ne- you never quit acting. You know, you believed in yourself. You never gave yeah. up. Yeah. But, you know, and then this is the one thing. I had a lot of help. And when I say that, didn't have, you know, obviously I didn't have a rich uncle in the industry. None of that. I had people like Paul Sorbino or Tilda Swinton, or, you know, my acting coaches, 
Mrs. Cunningham, who was the one that yeah, kind of Mrs. Cunningham, really Mrs. Cunningham. forget her. Yeah, Can't her last name is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I actually reconnected with her son, uh, and I had a chance to thank him, you know, wow, because she had man. passed right six months before I got mine, because I tried to reach out to her, oh. I tried to find her. Yeah, and she had just passed. Is, is, is there a big part of your life that's changed since the success of Mayans? Like, not financially, just, I don't know, just how your life feels or, like, a happiness or something that... There, there's a happiness. You know, like I said, I remember I go back to that that time. I, I was actually pretty gacked out when I was in that open field. And it was you hot. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember <laughs> saying, this is as good as it's going to get. This yeah. is it. And it was, and you know, being a barren field out in the middle of the heat, just thinking it was like hell. Yeah. But a part of me was like, no, there's something out there. And then to see this are you, life. Are you a spiritual person? I think I am. I mm-hmm. definitely do. Right. I, I really yeah. try to, you, you know. That. I can feel that too. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, like organized religion for me just didn't work. Right. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work. Right. But, uh I, there's just something out there's too many things out there that mm-hmm. you know and yeah I think that's a part of being a human being like yeah. there's something where I think we are all spiritual beings right. however you For define sure. that Absolutely. you know yeah. one man's Ace Freely is another man's Gene Simmons, but you know, and I didn't make that up, by the way. That's that pretty sick. that like, came from uh, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> what was his name? Dennis something, the, the comedian. But he, uh, not oh Rob. Dennis uh, Leary. No, 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 the other one. Uh, he was super rad. But, I don't know uh, it was Dennis Leary, the home. Yeah, but it, but he guy. said that, but it, but it made total sense, mm-hmm. you know. So what was like your last like official real job before? I was cooking. That was the last thing. You remember yeah. what year that was? No, <laughs> this Mayan thing has been a blur for me. It's been ten years, even though the show's been yeah. on for so many. Because it was my quest. Before wow. you came, just an actor. That's Jeez. it. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. Time. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I go into restaurants or certain restaurants I go to, and I just look at the kitchen moving, and I miss that. Not that energy. you know, I did because it was a good camaraderie in there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and just the pace Team. and the intensity, and you know, there was just something about it. I miss it. One day, I mean, I do hope to own a restaurant. Yeah, I was going to say that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You still yeah. cook a lot? I do. In fact, I just cooked. <laughs> they had one of the clubs that had a, a barbecue, and um, I cooked a big thing up for those guys, and those guys destroyed it. Like, the food, it was gone. <laughs> nice. and, I, and I was really happy about that. What's one of, like, your best dishes, you think? You know, I, it just depends on what time of year. It depends on what's available. Okay. You know, I really, I just want somebody to, sit down and eat and they feel like they had a home cooked meal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they there's the thing about the time people really do come together is when they eat. Hundred percent, man. Yeah. And a you know World Peace starts it from the kitchen. Yeah. The slogan. Shout yeah. the tall crossroads. Yeah. Yeah. He's rad. I love that guy. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go eat there after this. It actually. came from our world, man. Same yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the part that I love. Because yeah. we Mayans we had a dinner there. Oh no, that's right. That's right. Elgin always goes there. Yeah. Always. And yeah. He had some cool shirts for me and Yep. Those and are the ones where we sibbed you that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. So rad. <laughs> and some of the guys are like, well, what's that all about? You know, where's my shirt? It's like, you didn't earn it. Shut up. <laughs> Go sit down, young man. Can you cook some good vegan shit, too? I can. Actually, wow. I don't eat I don't eat meat. What? I don't yeah. eat pork, no chicken, no nothing. Now, I'm not going to lie. I do eat fish. That's all right, man. You try okay. it, man. But, right. but I haven't Respect. had it. But Eddie almost put the guilt on a lot of us, and a lot of us quit eating meat. But I honestly, I feel a lot better. Yeah. I do. Sure. Yeah. Wow. That's it's been awesome. a few years. Yeah. Do you have um any? Do you have like a top five favorite musicians or artists or bands that changed you, inspired you? Well, I just saw Peter Hook, you know, from Joy Division. Mm-hmm. My third time seeing him. <laughs> I didn't know he was in town. Wow. So I, I, you, we, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, no, the Joy, Joy Division. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like it's been passing in my head, but on this last tour, I never knew what Joy Division meant. Right. Oh yeah. I yeah. don't either. Tell me. And it, and it kind of like it's a World War II fucked with uh, my head. After well, it was a Nazi reference, but uh, yeah. No the way. Joy I remember I would see the shirt, yeah. and it was like this a Hitler little youth. kid drummer boy, right. like, and I was like, I did not know that. And mm-hmm. so my guitarist told me, and he was like, you know what that means, and I was well, like. I mean, they had their, but but that wasn't their intent. Of, I mean, I they had the whole breakdown, but it was controversial at the time. Yeah, very controversial because they had the band was called Warsaw before Joy Division. Did not know that either, man. Yeah, yeah. But Mark uh, loves that band. But I I, I love them too. Man. Yeah. I, so to see band. Peter Hook for the third time, and I didn't know he was playing, so I said, I hope there's tickets. The only tickets they had left were right in the very front, dead center. So no I'm sitting down looking at Peter Hook, probably where you're. Uh, yeah, probably ten feet up at wow. most, wow. closer than that. It's cool. And I, I had a blast. And 
this guy, you know, granted, he was doing his little goth dance, kept elbowing me, and I'm like, just be cool, don't get mad. <laughs> so then my other friend, she was in the front row, and I go, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm good. I wish I could sit by you. This guy keeps, you know, bumping me, and he's drunk, and I got to let it go. So she pulls him aside. She goes, hey, don't bump that guy. I think he worked for El Chapo. And then, <laughs> wow. And, and then the guy, like, you know, was doing this sideways dance. Yeah. And he, like, <laughs> he was super polite after that, and I didn't know what happened. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, he was harmless. So, Joy Division's top, top five. Probably. And Nick Cave. Clashing? Yes. There? Oh, of man. course. Oh, Clash. But I just saw Nick Cave, right? Like, yeah, that was another show. I That show was beautiful to me, because I'll be honest. I had a charity. I had signed on for it. I could not get out of it, and I didn't want it because it was for the firefighters. But I missed my dad's memorial. And when I went and saw Nick Cave, I felt like that was like my dad's memorial. And yeah. It was the most beautiful, spiritual, one of the best shows I'd ever seen. Wow. I've seen him several times, but that was another one. Yeah. I mean, but then you have bands like Sham 69 that still gut me to this day, or the Skin Flicks, or, you know, Joe Strummer, obviously. Amazing, mm-hmm. man, yeah. But... But like I said, I mean, I love music. Yeah. So for me, you know, one particular genre, it's hard hard yeah. to nail because yeah. I really do. I just, you know, I still have an iPod. People laugh at me. But I've wow. got several iPods cool. because I don't like Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. That's some of the kids, they use the Bluetooth, I yeah. think. <laughs> and <laughs> I have it when I'm writing, you know. It's like yeah, I don't I don't want to lose, you know, uh, my right. playlist yeah. when right. I'm writing. And something about an iPod that's super cool. Yeah. Nah, we might have it in the drawer somewhere. I, remember I the, definitely the have. Red I think I have my first one. Yeah. I like millions of songs on that thing. Well, I yeah. know a good guy that repairs them and can get them going for you. He's right nice. down the street. Wow. Yeah. What like, about hip-hop for you? Is everything? It, I don't know if it was really my thing, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to Cypress Hill, jeez. Mm, and, you know, I don't even, I, I never smoked weed, really. So, <laughs> but there's something about them that Amazing they're group. so rad. I never and, smoked weed and have a Cypress tattoo with oh, the weed on man, it. man, they're so rad. <laughs> love Cypress. I, I love Cypress Hill. Um, How about some East Coast, like Public Enemy or anything like that, or Wu-Tang? It, you know, it, it wasn't really my thing. I mean, I it just wasn't. It. Yeah, now, yeah. when Ice-T did Body Count and everything like that, you Hard. know, that was rad. Um, I definitely love Delinquent Habits. Yeah. You know, uh, With uh, them, yeah. And, and, and I'm not going to lie. Like, I actually was kind of moved by Eminem, some of his stuff. Incredible. Straight up. Yeah. Incredible, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. Incredible artist, man. You definitely. know, that guy's real. Yeah. I mean, no he, doubt. He guts you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 and I, that's how I kind of gauge music. Like, are they telling the truth? Like, mm-hmm. are they really like? And if it's like an acting, you can tell when an actor's acting, right? But you could tell when a storyteller is telling a true story, and and they believe it, yeah, and you believe it. And I think that's just what I try to find in music. You know, like I, love that. I was listening to Baby Huey, you know, Hard Times on the Way yeah. Over, and it's oh, like, yeah, man, that guy was really having hard times. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> but dude, but dude. I just love it. It's just great song. I like getting gutted by music. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's the punch of the arm that I like. When's the last time you like stage dive you were in a pit? Oh jeez. <laughs> I never asked that question before. I just want to ask The last right. time that I remember I stage dive was MDC. Whoa! Right. Yeah, we yeah. love MDC. Right. We play them all the time and sing along in the car. Right. It was at the yeah. farm. Oh. And do you remember they had the big Ronald McDonald with the Gene Simmons makeup on that yeah. they stole? Corporate Death Burger. Right. Ronald, Ronald McDonald. McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this song. Yeah. So, that band's a heavy yeah. time speaking about all that shit. Right. And I remember stage diving and I got caught in Dave's microphone. Now, his cable must have been three miles long, but my legs were dangling in the air and they're trying to pull me. But for some reason, that cable wasn't snapping and I was stuck and everyone was. But it was a fun stage dive. And then I think. Uh, Verbal wow. abuse. There's a documentary about the farm uh, in San Francisco, and you see a young me, probably 15, stage diving to verbal abuse. I saw That's it. Yeah. Dope. Sick. So I think those are the only times I felt brave enough because I and I didn't even have insurance, and I don't think. That was, <laughs> did uh, you love MDC? I did. I would see. I mean, they were a staple band at the farm. They're cool. uh, every Friday, like it seemed like MDC was always playing. Yo, this song, just content. everything they're talking about, yeah. man. It's just fucking happening now. And I, I've seen Dave get down, man. I remember one time there was this guy who was punching people in the pit, and Dave had this marching band helmet on, and he's yelling at this dude like he's in his face. And this guy's bigger than him, and this guy's actually scared. But I'm thinking, man, he's scaring this dude with that big marching band head wow. on. It's so red. So and it, yeah, it looked like a water buffalo from the Flintstones or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But man, he tore into that guy, but it was just. 
you I know, feel like MDC should have been bigger than they were, man. Like they're yeah. underrated or something. Yeah, they're so intense. Because Dead Kennedy is great with all the stuff they talk yeah. about politically, but MDC is just they took it another level, man. Just the multi death burger, like Copa de Burger. and the T-shirts. You know, they like, had oh, the t I had the T-shirt. The oh, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, that you can tell my dad his friends Yo, love that shirt. <laughs> Did your dad know about that band? Does he wear? Oh that? yeah, he's like, yeah, I don't know. how I feel about that. Like he wow. was very. Yeah, they a were. A lot of know, people felt. Not good about that shirt. It was bad was religion like, bringing those records home back in the day, probably for kids. Well, I just remember right. I had a huge Reagan Youth poster. Oh wow! From the yeah. album. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then I good. was just like, I love this band, and people were just like, mm. you know. Man, I remember. Yeah, was it? Uh, it's great. Who was it? Uh, American Youth Report. That was one compilation American I Youth did Report, like, yeah. and I like when Mystic would put stuff out. Like Mystic, when yeah. Mystic yeah. covers that one album was fantastic too. Yeah, I remember American Youth Report too as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clockwork Orange County. I mean, that was the closest. Dude, John Wayne was a Nazi, bro. Fucking MC. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I remember. Like, yeah, I was like. I remember. Pleasure you said red, white, blue. blue. Dude, yeah. USA guy, I'm a good chance to stand on the same three. But wow. Lemon, lemon, you can understand why the people were out pissed of off. Yeah. yeah. It made sense. Yeah, it totally we made sense. We just saw him, see Finally, at, at freaking Punk Rock Bowl, we got to see him. Really? Yeah. It was cool hearing those songs, man. Gosh. It brought back so many memories. I know, dude. Because it was really tuned in to the youth then. Right. You know, people, were, I mean, I was like, man, this dude is speaking, you know, my mind. It right. was so good. Well, and that was a thing. You look at you look at people that, that are still doing it and they're still in it for love of the game. Like, you know, I, I mean, I remember I'd see Fang numerous times. Wow. Oh, yeah. I still I talk to Sammy. Today. Lee you Bing, know? Fear's still playing. He's so rad. Okay, that guy <laughs> talked to me him, about yeah. acting. Yeah, he's a great actor. Too. Super rad. I was, I was uh, roadieing for a band called The Sick, a hardcore band in San Francisco, I yeah. and I remember uh, Fear played with them, and Lee kept to himself, but for some reason he knew I did acting or something. So we sat and talked about it, and I was so stoked. Um, this was like two thousand ninety nine, or it was in ninety nine two thousand. Then they had me work the stage for them, you know, in a couple of their shows, you know, in Northern California, and he was just. A righteous guy. He looks nice. like an actor. He's as cool as wow. man. He's Streets of like, Fire. He, he was so epic. Oh yeah. He was in Flashdance. Clue. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's some other musicians who are ended up being great actors. It's like well, uh, Rollins. Rollins is great. Man. Tom Waits. Tom Waits. Incredible. Um, mm. Especially was in The Outsiders. Incredible. I didn't know I was looking at Tom Waits. I was like, I never knew one day I'm gonna have a lot of your albums. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. Incredible Mark Wahlberg, voice. good actor. He was a rapper. True, <laughs> true. No, no, you're. I, he was though. He was well, yeah. funky bunch. Yeah. But then you had Steve Jones. You know, got mm. acting, did pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I mean. And the kid from that movie Suburbia was in Platoon. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 Chris Peterson. Guys? Chris yeah. Peterson. Yeah. Suburbia. Wow. I met Andre um, Pegleg. We He's bowled. Legit, right? Yeah, we we were all bowling in San Francisco before our bowling alley became an amoeba. Wow. Yeah. Oh Good God. dude. So he's we, a real punk rock dude. Yeah, yeah. super rad. We that was pretty wild. Breathing movie. fire. That yeah. movie when he wa- it's super depressing. It is. It's man. really sad. Yeah. Ethan like, little I, punk rocker on yeah. the uh, Mohawk. And I was like mm. on his big wheel. <laughs> TSOL so well killed it in that dude. movie. Yeah, and Fleet, yeah. another great Fleet. actor. He's another. He's another man. Yeah. Yeah. He's done some dark stuff and True. he's so good. Yeah, he is. I just saw him in one a few years ago where it was about a, a conversion camp, a religious conversion camp, and he was one of the. the the guys that you know would kind of humiliate people to to convert them, yeah. And he was so dark and intense, but it was and knowing you know what he's about, right. I think when they blow your mind with that, yeah, that character, it's unbelievable. Is there anybody you kind of tripped on, like that either recognized you or loves the show or like another actor yeah, or gave you props? Tripped or something? out moment with. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember who. Now I'm drawing a blank, You're right. but I it's I remember, I it 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 kind of tripped me out because you're like, when we film. And you're immersed in it and trying to do the job and tell the story. I forget that it gets put in the can that goes out there. <laughs> yeah. You forget. Yeah. People see it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what it was. And somebody had talked to me about it. And I remember being in disbelief. I remember yeah. being like. But it's around the world. Because you know, you know who's know? watching. Everybody's yeah. watching. Man. Yeah. But, but like I said, the, the, the part that gets me and makes me happy is when I hear from the bands. And the right. people like, you know, I mean, Sebi from Stumper 98, it did me up. And he's like, hey, I just saw this. And yeah. I was so happy because I always thought he was a really wonderful gent. And me and Freddie Mabble talk about Mayans all the time. Oh, I told him I have everybody's coming on. Rad. Like, he loves it too. Like, It's just rad. It means a lot <laughs> because to me, 
we had other guys, you know, some of the guys on the show came from gangs. Some other yeah. guys were just actors. Yeah. I kind of felt a little displaced because not that they had to know where I came from, but the only person that got me was Elgin. Yeah. And then when these other guys were coming on the sets and everything like that and doing work and doing mm -hmm. good work, being professional, it was like, once again, it, it was a blessing. Right. Yeah. Because then it's like that purpose or that part of my life I was able to bring in, into that too. Nice. It's amazing, man. It's incredible. It's like your story, like your... I'm so happy for you. And we, that yeah. we reconnected Thanks. too, you know what I'm I mean? stoked about that. I'll be, I'll be honest. It's I, really cool, man. I'm, I'm I don't even remember, but then I saw you on the show. I was like, oh my God, I know him. Oh my God. But I hadn't <sighs> seen you in like 20 years. It's just crazy, man. How life is in just a small world, you know? Yeah, I, I think I saw you almost 18 years ago at Whole Foods on 3rd Street. It was kind of <laughs> like, it was like, hey man, what's up? But it was like a quick, hey, what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I was living in the Palazzo. By then, I think and it was just sort of like, oh, hey, it was, it was super quick, but not. I don't think you're. But then I see me, on the but, show, yeah. but like a fucking season five's yeah. coming. So when does that kick off for you? Like a couple months, I heard. Okay, allegedly, okay, but right. you never know. That was so exciting when they announced that. Shit. I was like, fuck, because nice, I had Gino nice. on. We were talking about it. Yeah, I love that dude, man. And we had went out a good night. Yeah, that was a good talk, real talk. Yeah, good dinner. Yeah, it's cool, like talking to Gino. Like, yeah, I grew up in Miami. He had a hardcore band. He was straight edge. Pretty much, he still is. He has a Mavel tattoo. I'm like, what? You're on the show? Like, it's, yeah. it's just cool, like, the small world, like. Yeah. His band opened up for one of Elgin's bands. Wow. They, play, they tour with Mavel, too, as well. Wow. It's just cool. Like, just, I love how these worlds connect. Like, later on in yeah. life, and we're still part yeah. of that, you know? Well, and it's nice because, you know, punk rock and, and, and that life. Whether it's hardcore or oi or whatever, you can't lie about that resume. Nah, no. dude. You know, and and you can't. And and it's nice that, like I said, when I would hear from people, like oh, it's like, you know, it's nice. Yeah, to do your friends remembered. trip out? Like, do you like you're an actor now on this show? And nah, I mean, we still bust on each other and and call <laughs> each cool. other out. Yeah. I mean, th cool. that my my tribe of circle of people is legit. Mm -hmm. And and I'll be honest, you know, I it. A lot of it is half and half between, you know, people are are seen tribe and motorcycle community. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the club guys, a lot of those guys did evolve from punk rock and, you know, totally. went into the power clubs. But I just, I'm just big on the fact that, that uh, you know, your word is your bond. And, and, you know, you look a man in the eye and shake his hand when you talk to him and, you know, you get what you give. And so I really try to be super respectful. and Yeah, I love that, man. And, and I just want to be an upstanding man a man you know and and uh so nobody's gonna sugarcoat anything in those circles they're gonna tell you how it is <laughs> yeah. and i like that Very i'd true. rather hear that the truth nice. than you know yeah i don't i don't need people to tell me what i want to hear because mm -hmm. yeah. that's what agents do and i never i never mounted anything except well my agent i have now i love her to death but i yeah. mean <laughs> i'm just talking uh I'm talking to you, Gloria. I love you. Um, Shout out to Gloria. But, but yeah, it's just. Uh, Are you still learning and trying to be a? You feel like you you want to be a better actor. You feel always, like always trying to learn. You always do this. Yeah, the best thing to tell yourself is I know nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you know everything, well, good luck. I've never right. seen it work out well for anybody. <laughs> yeah. for and I, I was that guy Facts. for a while. Thank God, not in this trade. But right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Uh -uh. I always want to learn. Yeah. I want to something new. Something you know every day. I, I have to. Yeah, I love that. You know, because if this thing isn't shutting off and I'm not sleeping, might as well put it to good use. And when yeah. people say, you only use this much of your brain, I'm trying to beat that theory. I'm trying to use almost all of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true. It's just, that's my quest. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. So, I'm stoked for the new season. I'm stoked to see Thank you. the yeah. rest of your journey and what happens. And Thanks. It's I'm awesome, stoked. man. Thanks for having me here. This is super. Who would have thought that a van ride to the hate it's from crazy. a club in the 90s would end up here. It's that's a, the that's, beauty of life. And yeah. that's when I saw Derek. We were having a nice meal with Big C. And yeah. That. Oh, nice. Shout out to Big C. I talked uh -huh. to Big C today, actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to shoot him a text. He's the best. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, Love thank you for guy. being. Any more questions? For the... That's all. This was me. great, man. Thank I'm really you. happy this Thanks happened. Thanks, you guys. And, uh, Thanks, Derek. Absolutely. We're going to have electric bikes. We're gonna <laughs> yeah, electric yes. Bikes. Let's do it. Let's if get any, it. Any company is listening right now. Any, yes, especially. Derek needs a new bike. You can hit by a car. One that doesn't suck. Yeah, the one that doesn't suck. And there's a great company, a Ukrainian company. Were they call man and shout them out it's like oh god i want to say delta something okay but they're oh delph delphi incredible there needs a new bike incredible let's get him a new bike yeah let's do it and i want to be part of that too i want okay i'll have a car for like a year i know so I you, you haven't had a car you guys so. can always get harleys too oh man. my god i never rode a motorcycle ever man oh we're gonna have to fix that yeah. you rode a motorcycle yes i love them but i rock really? and roll don't mix with motorcycles so much that's not what deep purple said <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me check my notes. Yeah, everything's on these notes. Yes. Really excited. This is okay. okay. I'm assigning. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find this guy on the gram. Just Frankie Laurie on the gram, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. you have a website or anything or not? No, nah, I try not to. I, I, you can find me on the gram or what is it? The tweeter? The, the something? <laughs> the, the yeah, do you spend a lot of time on social? Or are you just on there once in a while? No, nah, like, I mean. Instagram is, uh, yeah, sometimes I see the TikTok and I like the watching TikToks. the funny videos with the animals, <laughs> but I, 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 I'm not, yeah, some guys are on there. I just, but do you me. answer your DMs? Do you talk to people? I do, them? as long as they're respectful and, and no, I'm not looking for a wife anytime soon, so oh, you know, you have to kind of hang oh, off so on that. Are you single? I'm totally single. Oh, okay, he's hey. heard that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Single and you ever, block, you ever block anybody <laughs> on the gram? Huh? You ever, ever, ever have to block anybody on the gram? Not really. I mean, the That's thing nice. is, most people are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. You know, okay. it's just the guy say, hey, man, you know, right in real life, you guys are fakes. And I just find out where he lives <laughs> and I show up at his house and then he, can we just be friends? Yeah. 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 Now, everybody's actually pretty cool. Well, this is an amazing human right here. Thank and you, he is single and he is killing <laughs> it. <laughs> You're just like a, you become a dating podcast. I know. Just put it out to the world, man. This guy's a very a nice man. You, if you heard this interview, you know this guy's a fucking wonderful uh, human, man. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Yo, we're back in the pod real quick because I'm holding Ryle 9 Collective. He gave us this 7-inch. Uh, no apologies, no regrets. What year did this come out? I think 2011. 12, and it's on Chapter know. 11 Records, and you can get it. On uh, where can you get this record? Only from you? Only from me. I've I've yeah. got the boxes uh, full of. I've got. I don't know how many I've left. So you should have like a way that people can buy this music and support you. I know. We need to get a website for you. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say the name because somebody might steal it while we talk about it. But what about Corporatus Records? Oh uh, yeah, that was all com? part of Chapter Eleven. Yeah. No, okay. They they folded. I just talked to Ian. He was in the Randoms. I don't know if you. Remember I know the that. Randoms. In yeah. But that was Ian. So they. Uh, folded some years ago. So. Oh my God! I love this cover. What the dudes in the phones, dude? Well, you know where that came from. Wow. Where did this break? When it There's an old photo from World War II. I'll have to show you the photo. Oh, wow. Oh, I'd love yeah. to see the original. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So is this, will this band play again? Are you inspired to play music now, even though you're so busy acting? Actually, there's a couple songs we're going to finish up. I'm trying to, we're possibly entertaining the idea. Talk to Patrick from the Skin Flick, Flicks. I'm hoping we can do a split with them. Okay. But uh, one of the songs I'm going to have, uh, Mike Oxley from the Fat Skins is going to join me. Oh, that's now. awesome. I'm pretty stoked. My so. wife's going to love this too, man. Ryo Non Collective, so, Los yeah. Angeles, oi. So there could be a show. You could play a show in the future. We don't know. We want to. I mean, right. we, anything's nobody, possible. Yeah. I think it'll happen. But it's just, uh, like I said, we got to get through this season and we'll see what happens afterwards. Okay. Well, keep an eye out for this too, everybody. I'll, I'll post a picture of it too when this episode yeah. drops. And this music's online or only on vinyl? Only on vinyl. Why not Spotify or Apple? Nothing? Well, they played two of those songs on that record on my end, so I have a feeling they'll probably... Oh, that, that is cool. They yeah. did oh, that. That's cool. They Thank did you, that. Elgin. Yeah. This is only available on yeah. iPods. Yeah. So yeah people sorry. Are <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> okay, so Raw and Unclick. That's cool, man. Awesome, man. I'm trying to get them on cereal boxes like in the 70s where you cut them out and then you can play it. But cereal boxes? Cereal boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Count Chocula or something like that. <laughs> Okay, awesome, buddy. We're signing off again, everybody, but that's cool. Okay, yeah. bye, everybody. I always ask my guests if they have any regrets. I personally don't have any regrets. Even when it comes to my tattoos, I have the silliest tattoos. Even my ET on my leg, it's still a childhood memory for me, and I love it. I've had tattoos on top of tattoos strictly because I wanted more tattoos. I started getting tattoos when I was 18. I'm 52 now, and I can't stop. I've had lazy treatment before on something on my arm. It's four tattoos on top of each other. And that experience at that place was pretty fast. It was pretty cold. It was in and out. Swiped the credit card. Don't really tell me much. Didn't give me much details or anything was going to happen. So I never went back. So as of most recently, I'm so lucky enough to have had two sessions at Removery Tattoo Removal. My tattoo on my arm looks like a big black blob. is now super light. I've had two sessions. I have a long road ahead of me. None of this stuff happens overnight. You cannot take a tattoo up in one sitting. You have to be patient. And it's painful. They ice you up. It's super fast. To me, it felt like a bunch of rubber bands. But what's more painful than that is looking at something on your body that you think you're stuck with for the rest of your life. That sucks. But now for me, I'm really happy I started this journey. I'm slowly going to get this tattoo removed. I never thought in a million years I have any kind of real estate on my arm. I don't even know what I want, but it's exciting. I'm so honored to announce that One Life, One Chance podcast is now with Removery. I have a code. Use tobyh 20 and get $100 off your first session. Call 866-934-4570 or go to removery.com. 
one of the most experienced tattoo remover companies in the world. Over 600,000 remover treatments done, 100 locations, U.S., Canada, and Australia. State-of-the-art peak-away laser technology, cryotechnology to reduce any discomfort. This is so exciting for me because all I do in these podcasts is talk about tattoos. From day one, if you've been listening to this podcast, we talk about tattoos, talk about getting removed, talk about getting covered up. So this is such a perfect fit for me. Once again, go to removery.com or call 866-934-4570. Use my code TOBYH20 and get $100 off. These guys are located everywhere. Try it out. Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death, thank you so much for hydrating all my guests, taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water, love your brand, love what you stand for, love you give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co-founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. They have now blessed me with my own code. So if you go liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives. <laughs>